I forgot to start the YouTube stream. Thank you, Hellion743, for your tier one su subscription. T1 fraud review, you say? I do say that. It's very serious. We'll pick an LEC game after we're done with this series, guys. Whatever LEC game you want, we'll vote on it later. How are you guys today? I'm having a good morning. Went to the gym. Then I went to the sauna in my apartment complex's basement. They have a Korean uh, bathhouse down there. It's pretty nice. Now, I saw a bunch of energy versus 100 Thieves when I woke up, so I don't really feel like watching that garbage on stream. Guys, I'm not going to... Dude, five games of garbage is... It's a lot of garbage. I know you're hungry raccoons, but it's a lot of garbage even for you. Is that my real room? Of course it is. 100% real. There's a rise of Milky Way tomorrow. It's probably going to be later this week. Got to get through some uh, LCK before the Monty and Wolf show tomorrow. Before L LCK starts in three hours. You guys can enjoy the glory of my lunch. You ready? So here we go. It's a quesadilla I made. Hopefully you can see this. It's a quesadilla I made. So this quesadilla has grilled kimchi in it that I made, and it has steak that I marinated in like a chipotle, like a chipotle chili marinade with orange juice. So it's like uh, kind of like a sada, but with orange juice and with Chuck I roll a cut. And then I made, I fire roasted a bunch of tomatoes and onions. And I made a fire roasted salsa. And let me tell you guys, this kimchi quesadilla is fucking delicious. People are loving these Giga Sloppy NA series. Well, I'm not loving them. Monty, no love. Shitty LCS games. It's really just embarrassing. Zeri and the bet on T1 is bad again. Yeah. Yeah. They do suck at playing Zeri. That is true. Very different things. <laughs> it's very true. And uh, we've also seen Peanut kind of struggle. Uh, Doan, you doing a Dune part two vid on Last Free Nation? Yep. That will probably go up today. I think I'll put that one up today. Uh, Dune Part 2, me and Doug talking, reviewing it. Oh yeah, I'll definitely watch some of the CS Major as it gets later in the tournament. Into the higher, higher caliber, uh, Nothing better in esports than a CS LPK. Major, guys. That's just how it is. It do be like that. Nothing better. But will he show up today is another question on my mind. As Malkai and Vi are going to be taken away, so already have any champ junglers. Nick? Yeah. Guys, kimchi is so good in case it is. You got to grill the kimchi first, like heat it up and char it a little bit. But the acid of the kimchi cuts the heaviness of the cheese so nicely. It's incredible. Dilf Gamer tag back. 
No, the Gilf, Dilf gamer tag was always there. They won't let me put just Dilf. I can put Zaddy, but I can't put just Dilf. So I have to go with Dilf gamer. Kimchi on grilled cheese. Yep, you you understand. If there's like a heavy fat element, having kimchi in there is just amazing. Because it balances out the heaviness of the fat. And it provides this acidity that's super nice. It's the same reason why the salsa is good on the quesadilla. Well, guys, I've got to go back to the States for a while in May. So I'm considering bringing my, uh, my, some of my cooking stream equipment back to Korea so I can actually do a cooking stream here. No, they're just targeting him heavily. And so if you want that comment, these are a lot of jungle. Or I won't you do it. Onus is on you. All. you know, all right, let's get into this one. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Clockwork. Welcome back. Great food and bangers, yep. <laughs> Just started fasting. Muhammad Syed. Well, I'm sorry to ruin your Ramadan with my kimchi quesadilla. Uh, Good luck, Lucia. my friend. Sanders gonna get banned away, which I think is a great call. And they're gonna pick Lucian. No, they're gonna pick Calista. They did it. <laughs> Good call. But yeah, we've talked extensively about Dude, the... my my cooking streams, by the way, were so high quality. I I have a four camera setup with a switcher. With my wife producing them. If you guys watched my previous cooking streams, you know I had like the highest quality production of cooking streams on Twitch. It was fucking bananas. You guys just didn't watch it. All right. Um, let's get into it. So there's Wani Ban versus Peanut. Vi Ban versus Peanut. Okay, they're just going hard on the junglers. Ash. Okay, so Varus is still up here. <laughs> Naja fan, thank you. Cooking stream. All right. Um... Uh, no, I didn't save the VODs for the cooking streams, tragically. But those of you who were there know how awesome they were. <laughs> Kenji Alt Lopez of the LOL community. He's so good, man. I love his work. His cookbooks rule. Um, So, basically, we're going to leave Callista up, which is obviously kind of dangerous, versus T1. So... As we start this off, Abrupt Gecko, what a name. Suddenly Lizard. Thank you. Subscribe with Twitch Prime. Let's talk about options here, because there's some scary options here, like there's Callista, there's Varus, right? So they actually leave a lot up um, that you might want. Um, they have to be careful, because obviously Peanut is a poppy player, and if you're going to first pick Callista... Um, you know, there's a, there's a possibility here that it becomes like Poppy Talia, uh, which is pretty good into Callista and a possible Ari as well. YouTube membership in Prime. That's all the support. Thank you, Abrupt Gecko. Zenka95, thank you for your Twitch Prime sub. Why are Callista and Vera scary? Because T1 is fucking good at them. Um, and because they're very dominant AD carries in the meta, and T1 is very good at playing through bot lane. But these, it feels pretty good that you could get Poppy and Talia maybe here if they do first pick that Callista. Um, Power of let's see how this shakes out. And with this Callista, it's a flex. Bot lane would be very threatening. So the Callista is, is a flex. This could be support. They're going to take Varus in response. This could easily be Varus. Uh, uh, yeah, you could be Varus Rel. Could be Varus Poppy. Okay, we'll be Varus Rel. This could still be going bot lane. So I don't know if they're going to ban more junglers, if they're going to ban the Poppy or not. Man, Poppy feels so good into Lee Sin, Callista. Poppy, 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 Poppy. Flex in theory, but I would imagine probably picking that specific go into the Aatrox. And considering it's a pretty yeah, it's probably into the Aatrox. Okay, so what are we going to ban now? Nico. Okay, this is a very specific... This is a very specific uh, pick for... Um, obviously for Faker, but it's a flex for T1, so you don't want to give the Nico over. This is a great ban because Nico, Callista, you can chuck the Nico in later. So support Nico is a thing. And Renata, they're going to ban Alistair for all-in potential. And Nautilus. 
Oh man, I hope this is a <laughs> really. Yeah, this, is risky. this is very risky. Yeah, I mean you're opening up for a potential good matchup. Yeah. Yes, I mean, take Ari. From Hanwha, like, good, 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 good. So Hanwha takes away the Ari, even though they could give up the Ari and pick Poppy, and then they're making it so that this is a flex all the way into R5. Annie for Faker. Oh my God, he's back on this bullshit. Everybody's back on the Annie bullshit right now. Okay, Bard, because you have uh, low mobility AD champions like Varus and Jace in the back line. Play Poppy. Yes! 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 I called it, guys. I, I haven't seen these drafts or these games, by the way, so I didn't know. This is a great draft, I think, for, for Hanwha. Yes, there's going to be danger. Um, okay, so we've seen the Annie-Ari matchup quite a bit. When Zekka picks Ari, he has to know that Faker is thinking about playing Annie. Um, basically because you have a targeted stun on your Q, it makes it so that Ari, um, you know, can get hit very heavily, even if she's ulting, uh, you can CC her, and we see post six, the Ari just kind of bu get bullied under turret a lot of the time, because Annie will just drop tippers onto Ari, force Ari away, deal two thirds of Ari's, uh, health bar and damage through a cycle of Annie's abilities, and so Annie really does control the map well, so if we're T1, what this means is, like, we want Drakes, right? We want Drakes because we want to dump Tibber's mid and play aggressively with the Callista and play for Drake stacking. Um, meanwhile, Poppy, big value into Callista and Lee Sin, obviously. Uh, and this is going to be more of a poke style of composition, right? Um, we'll see. Is it a lot going to depend on how well Peanut plays, I think. <laughs> I remember watching you cast back in season three when I used to play LOL. You haven't fucking aged one bit. Yeah, I know, baby. Take care of myself. Good genes. Think T1 Thank you, one, two, three, four, Fran, for loving my content. Thanks for dropping by. Feels pretty good too to R5 Poppy for Peanut. He's just sitting there the whole time. They're like banning away a bunch of junglers. He's like, yeah, I guess I'll just play one of my favorite champs in the entire game. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it and works perfectly with the comp. It's really good against what the enemy has. It's so high value here. Like yeah. against the bard who's going to come through a magical journey. Just He's plumped up a bit I mean, since then. Susie. The and the thing is, you're not pressured. Susie, I'm in extremely good shape right now. <laughs> um, you have tools too. But you can kind of just sit back and play peel. So yeah, Hunter Life Esports, I think game one up to a good start, just coming out of the draft phase. Yeah. As we have all of the fans. My wife says plumped up, which he means is is jacked. Out for now. Hopefully we get them back for week nine and playoffs, but uh, still working on it. As here is the T1 draft. Certainly some interesting stuff here. Calista Bard, you don't see every day. Also the Annie coming back in the mid lane. Yeah, Zuchi Mia, thank you for your Twitch Prime resubscription. Been one of my favorite league seasons in a while. Thanks to all the content from Elephant. Oh, thank you very much. Very nice, this composition, how it's going to work together as we are ready to hop into the rip for game number one. <laughs> Delac V1, total I will dominate vindication this week. T1 fighting. I mean, I guess. I, I don't think he was calling T1. He's happy when T1 loses. I don't think he was calling T1 fraudulent. They did look good for large parts of the split. That poppy skin. Looks like an Annie. Oh. Look at it. Yeah, it does. What? He did that on purpose. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day. Indeed. You guys are all probably drunk. Sad I can't go to the annual St. Patrick's Day concert of Flogging Molly in Los Angeles. So you get them mixed up. <laughs> yeah. Make my life a little bit harder. Yeah. Once it gets to team fights. Imagine if you had to cast and you didn't have the health bars or the names. You just had to use the champion. Faker ward goes in early this time, guys. I think that would make it a little bit tricky. Yeah. Imagine if the client was in a language you didn't understand. Usually doesn't go in until closer to a minute 30. Mm. I've done that before. 
That would that would seem like a hindrance. Delight actually trying to clear the fake reward. Ah, oh, foiled. Faker Ward is foiled. Now they won't know Peanut's route because it went in early, guys. You know, now you have a chance to get Delight down to the bot lane because you put it in early so he can sweep it out. Gotta put that Ward in later. Yeah, he's been playing this a lot. He has, you know, it's it's him and King who really just played this champion a ton. And theirs has been doing... Good on it. Did T1 really get bamboozled uh, to the pot? I don't see how you could do that. I don't see how you could ban three junglers and know, know you're playing against Peanut and be like, hmm, maybe he won't play Poppy. Into Callista. I feel like that was highly predictable. I predicted it. By the way, I don't know who wins this game. So, but I really like Hanwa's draft for Hanwa. I understand if you get like a five man sweet spot Q3, I get it, you're gonna heal a lot. But I feel like you won't even get the sweet spot and he'll just like Q2 and he'll heal like 200 health or something ridiculous. Yeah. The champion just is so hard to kill for like, you know, we call it glass cannon, but he's definitely not made of glass. No. It's um, it's a very hard tempered glass, perhaps. Like a diamond cannon, you know? Yeah. That doesn't seem very fair. No. But that's Aatrox. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> now, so. That shell. That's why and there you go. Poppy, LCK win rate, 23 and 4. This is what I was Ridiculous. I mean, you're putting a spot as someone like eSports, a bunch of junglers are fans. He's my favorite Poppy player, guys, so Peanut. Poppy. Fucking yeah, love Peanut Poppy. Poppy. And it's Peanut's favorite champ. Yeah, I love that they just gave so much value to the... Uh, I, I do know that T1 loses, guys. Kind of saved for the very end. Uh, but I don't know which games they lose. Obviously, I know they lose game three. But I don't know if they also lose game one or two. And then they just flip it around. I think a lot of value achieved from that. And also on red side, because typically we've seen teams always leaning the blue side when they have choice predominantly and uh, taking the opportunity and using that flexibility well on the red side. Uh, but so far. Do you think like, JDG would beat FPX in a BO5? Uh, I mean, it was pretty convincing, FPX's win. Wubsk, thank you for your tweet, tier one sub. I appreciate it. Spoiler oof. Guys, this game was played two days ago. This is an analysis stream. It is not intended to be spoiler free. Lavi666, thank you. What is the final? Gen G versus T1 or Gen G versus the LA? It's probably still Gen G versus T1, guys, let's be honest. All right. Let's go back a little bit. So we have a push in here. So, first wave, this is fourth wave. Fourth wave still Ooh, contested. So fifth wave. Nice. Okay, so he blows his cleanse early, then trades out. Uh, this fifth wave. In the trade, so T1 actually going to be feeling pretty good about the way that wins. Not the best trade. I do think there's a caveat because with Rel, you have. So there's a fifth wave crash. Not a big deal, but this might be the payoff. Is they're going for a dive? Well, I guess this was the whole setup, and T1 are not feeling good about this anymore. Delight is going to. And also, you can W over walls, so not a big deal, but this might be the payoff. Is they're going for a dive. Well, I guess All right, super sexy. Stun, right, into stun lock, into turret. Great setup by Delight, though. Getting him in line with the turret. Super nice. Really good job by HLE for Delight to blow his cleanse and then help stun lock him with Peanut. Really beautiful play. Capitalization. I love this setup. You know, if that cleanse was available for Keen being a summoner, and it might be like, you know, three minutes later, oh, they're down flash, you can do this. This was literally. Like what is this? Dog like, analyst. Thank you for your setup, YouTube you know, membership. If that cleanse was available for Guma, it could have been a lot more scary to go for that dive, especially when you see how low Delight went. So, oh, no problem. Yeah. Managed to get away. But yeah, good stop. Really good stop for the side of on Life Esports. You're gonna get that early Dirk on Viper now, oh which my God, is gonna just make kind of never mind. It's over. Um, <laughs> Couldn't he flash away from Rel? He could have flashed away from Rel, sure. Um, yeah, so I I don't, don't think he thought he was gonna die. Yeah, and Guma tries to position away from the tower there, but gets flipped by Delight close enough that Peanut could slam it into it. Because you don't want to be near the wall. That's the easiest place to get slammed. So he was trying to prevent it. A wooga, wooga, woo. Thank you for your tier one sub. Not a pleb anymore. Congratulations. That is what uh, Pina is very good at. 
and donor has done it a bunch as well. We're we're buckling in for some fraud review. Guma has boots dagger. Uh, yeah, I think I know who's favored in that scenario. It uh, it's definitely Devaris, and it's gone lethality. It's pretty obvious when Halo blades and Guma go in the lethal tempo and oh, Mr. Q. maxing his E. So in terms of the poke war, should go pretty heavily in, t in favor of Viper and Delight. And they'll have a much easier time of this bottom lane. Yeah, he uh, Guma Yushi definitely could have flashed that there, but you know we saw them just get away with the magical portal. But any opportunity where you kind of get the CC, guess he greeted a little bit. He didn't think that they could probably stun lock him that well. It was a nice play by Delight and Peanut. What would be your KR All Pro? Keen. Ooh. I mean, it would have been Cuz in the jungle there for a while, but Kwangdong obviously has been doing a lot worse. So you can, you almost have to go Canyon, I think. It's either Keen or Zayas, obviously. I think I prefer Keen. Like Keen, it feels like shitty to put all of the members of uh, the top side of of Gen G, but I think it has to be Keen Canyon Chovy. And then I think I put Viper. Uh, Caria. Honestly, even better than the Clistic, because the Clistic actually has to stack up spears. Uh, and they really don't. Oh. Just do some burst. Zekka is going to be forced to Spirit Rush. Honor did use his Q, but no level 6 for him. And yeah, you can see Faker's already chunked him out with Tibbers, and he has to just get out of there because of the targeted stun from Annie. This is this is where you really start to win this hard, but the fact that uh, they lost control of bot side, you know, they've been pushed in means that they actually can't stack Drake, so Faker's pressure in mid is a lot less meaningful. You know, they're fucking around with Zekka right now, but uh, Peanut actually just takes, goes ahead and takes the Drake. say that you would say it it's the red buff you wouldn't say it if it was the blue buff then you would say blue handed yeah we couldn't wait oh my yeah and peanut level six i mean he's thinking about it as well at least trying to push him away as we do have this pass picked up there's the ult oh oh the, the plays i fucking it's love really poppy sure he's thinking about it as well at least trying to push him away as we do have this pass picked up there's the ult Oh man, why did he Q2 in? He actually just trolled. He literally Q2'd in when he didn't realize, like he should have known W's up because he hasn't seen W yet and that actually forces him to flash. So he goes back for Buckler, hits R on him. Looks like he's setting up for another E, but his E is four seconds off cooldown. <laughs> has W. Well, owner, owner is trolling, though. Dude, Owner is a poppy player. He should know. Yeah, like, he hasn't I seen W yet. Sure in what universe does he him. get that Q2? Here comes Zekka. He does not have Spirit Rush, but he was there, and now he's not. And he's running away, and the timing for him, very unfortunate. Not going to see Karia, who's on a gank to try to get on top of Doran here, who might be forced to flash away as the flash comes in from Zeus and does force it out. As Doran will have to get away. Karia just uh, with a cheeky wait, gank on the top you, side. How old is Peanut? Uh, 26 or 27? <laughs> Not doing too much with that one. Yeah, um, well, at least T1 won't expect the ward to be specifically there. Yeah. <laughs> he can see the enemy champions when they're close to him. Mm, yes. Double E. Yes. So. You know, if someone was hanging between the towers, you would see them slightly earlier. Y yeah. But now he has his, his poppy just e. in a human ward. Oh, he's setting up for the E when he walks into brush. Ooh, there it is. As, let's see the damage into owner. He's in a bit of trouble. Can't dash away. Set fast presence does go down. As flash on in from Peanut, and he's gonna pick it up. The kick comes out late. And Peanut Lull. Just picks up a kill, and now.
Look how Pino does this, though. So he procs Phase Rush, and he flashes over, because he knows Owner has Kick at this point. So if he gets kicked out, though, he understands that Zekka's coming, and he can also just kind of come back into the fight, even if he gets kicked. And now Zayus also trolling. This is Charm, though. Uh, if he hits Charm, he'd probably get that kill. He might get it anyway. Right, fair enough. Could have been easier. Could have been cleaner. Man, owner is fucking griefing, guys. I'm Pe Peanut is doing a great job of controlling him, but now he has his his poppy just being a human ward. I mean, this is a pretty easy read, right? Like, look at how slow this roll is into the turret. He also should know that Peanut is topside clearing. Who's on a gank to try to get on top of Doran here, who might be forced to flash away as the flash comes in from Zeus and does force it out. As Doran will have to get away. So uh, Doran uh, sticks around, but he has a refillable one. potion and two biscuits. He <laughs> 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 knows Peanut's here, so they get a good read on the incoming dive. Yeah. <laughs> he can see the enemy champions when they're close to him. Mm, yes. Double E. Yes. So, you know, if someone was hanging between. This is really well played by Peanut, though. Slightly earlier. Yeah. But now he has his his poppy just being a human ward. Oh, Peanut was setting up for that, and he's gonna hit it. As let's see the damage into Owner. He's. I mean, it's, it's a great play by Hanwa, right? He knows Owner has no flash because Owner had to flash because he used Q2 and the W earlier. Very casually picks up a kill and. Yeah. It's barely not enough damage. So close, loving the aggression from Delight on these engagements. Do our favorite soju. I mean, all soju is trash. It's it's literally cheap rice vodka that's diluted to 20%. But I prefer Chong Chorom. I was so patient with the play. Now, Peanut is all over the jungle right now. He picks up an early Knight's Vow as well. Uh, going to be pretty valuable when it I mean soju down, costs like a dollar a bottle in a fucking 7-Eleven in Korea dude it's not good it's, it's garbage it's legit garbage back again it's peanut it's cheap uh, hey man look i drink it when i go out to K barbecue in korea i get that mekju and soju combination going oh my god he's just getting bullied now they lost they just have had no control over bot side ever since that dive this is just a peanut show guys Peanut knows his camp respawns. He's gonna nut all over him. Charm. Oh, he's dead. Dude, I fucking called this Poppy. This Poppy pick was just fucking so good here. Again, he's just he's just reading him so well. Counters. Oh, you live in Korea, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, Chom Chorom is kind of my go-to. And the power of this Ari, oh, Doran might be in trouble. Yeah, Doran does not have his flash, so he's going to get sent up against the wall, and they should be able to uh, set this one up pretty easily. Not much recourse for him. Thoughts so on fixing the ADC weak drama by reworking Cole into an ADC starting item that gets stronger when support is close by? It's an interesting idea. By himself. Yeah, I think Doran pretty okay with our trade. Uh, sure. Kuma, I mean, this is a thing. That's like, an interesting call, dog analyst. You're pretty smart for a dog. Actively and getting the pick on Doran, definitely nice, but... Uh, I mean, I I want to wait and see what they do to the crit items and how much that's going to affect the game. I mean, clearly in the Smolder meta, guys, ADC is not weak. Like, let's be clear. Also, the the ADC is weak thing has been overplayed because the, the game is, like, played through bot lane right now and has been all year. Not much you can do except not TP in this case and just identify, hey, well, I got to kill on the bottom side of the map. That's fine. Just go after stack drakes. Maybe I should just walk this one. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Rugs just gonna get isolated by himself. Yeah, I think Doran pretty okay with our trade. Uh, sure. be in trouble. Yeah, Doran does not have his flash, so he's gonna get sent up against the wall, and they should be able to. Uh, right, is Jace without flash on the top side? What are you gonna do? For him, just push for damage. push for plates and drakes and bot side. Uma plates and drakes. On the Rugs just gonna get isolated by himself. Yeah, I think Doran pretty okay with our trade. Uh, sure. Uma. I mean, this is the thing, like, I, I respect Carrier. If you like Whistlepig, playing. you should check out Alberta Premium Cask Strengths. Definitely nice, but, uh, All right, I will. Esports, no hesitation in punishing on the other side of the map.
getting a Whistlepig is just sourced Alberta right Premium with a huge yeah, markup. No, it's not. They they do their own aging. That may have been true years ago, but that distillery's been around long enough to make their own stock now. Yeah, not not doing so great in the weak siding this game. I feel like um, yeah. people just kind of dying when the teams are focusing. But credit also, both teams doing a pretty good job of punishing. This is the replay of Guma. Was on a wall. I think he might have been spotted. Well, they knew the Krugs yeah. moved, so they knew he was there. It was still true as of last year. Spotting, Fair enough. Gets locked up. Playing close into Rel Poppy. Uh, very unfun, I think it's safe to say. And that timing from Carrier just flawless. It's one way to put it. Uh, Whistlepig is good, though. <laughs> Gino, thank you. Think you'll cover any of the LCS series tonight? No. We covered C9 versus 100 Thieves. I doubt I'm going to go through all five games of those last two series on stream. I also saw most of those games already live. Um, and, like, they're real shit, guys. Like, it would actually just be painful to go through five hours of those streams for me. I, I do have a, a trash limit. Like you guys are, you guys are at, like I have to. I in order to do that, I have to sacrifice streaming much better games like these. Okay, just disrespect. That's that's a. I mean, any mechanics are not really a thing. But if you watch this, Zeka's not too concerned because he sees what happens here is he sees that fakers at three stacks to stun and he doesn't think that he's going to get stunned here or he's at two stacks but he molten shields then he drops tibbers and he actually stuns with q so it's the q that stuns him right there and then he flash w's so that's just a nice micro play on Annie. It was a mind game, and Zeka did not think that he was going to Tibbers and then Q stun him, and then Flash W. My bad. My bad. And they have some tanky members that might be able to utilize it a little bit, but generally uh, not going to be nearly as good. Not so hot. We talk about this every time, but it's pretty important. In case it's not clear, have the two Drakes. If it's not clear, we don't. It was my MSI favorite right now, uh, Gen G BLG. So if that wasn't apparent. Yeah, still a lead for Hunter Life Beast. Uh, FBX probably won't make it, guys. They're going to die in best of fives. As as fun as they are, I, I just don't see them getting through multiple best of fives to make it to MSI. I think they're, they'll be max top four. Damage coming through is going to be very significant, and no one really has any armor on the side of T1 other than, you know, a Seeker's... Uh, sorry, uh, played Steel Caps on this. So, going to be doing a lot of damage to everyone. Got some armor on Carrier too, but at the end of the day, it's Whoa, like a whole cloth armor. Yeah, it's well, it's gonna be built into a chain vest, and then a item that has armor as well. Yeah, uh, FBX is massively yeah, overperforming relative to their over roster right strength. I mean, Milky Way is fucking amazing, yes, the but I do think there's a limit to how hard one stage. jungler can carry a team, no matter so how good he is. He might, like we're reaching a scenario where maybe this lethality. Varus just wins fights by himself with a couple of good cues. Yeah, and I mean, you even have the... The thing is, you have the Jace as well, but comps like this is you can kind of position in a way where as soon as you land the significant poke, Zeka can just go in and look to clean up. Like, Zeka with a bit of engage from Delight, Peanut there as well. Like you just If AJ had Showmaker, would they be able to win LCK? Yes. Kills, get the momentum going. I mean, they could have scouts, they could have... I mean, Zeka has been better recently, but... I mean, clearly, HLE as a team is gated by Dorn and Zeka mostly. But mid lane is probably the biggest position they could upgrade at. Because, like, Dorn at least wins titles. And don't fucking start with me with Zeka as a world champion. Don't fucking start. going to be dodged this time from Guma also has clans but the damage is already coming out here the teleport is channeled by the both of them as they are trying to get on top teleports available and that is going to be dodged chain of corruption misses Guma also has clans but the damage is already coming why out. are we fighting this is what are we doing in the 
crossfire. We do have teleports available. And that is going to be Are we just trying to collapse here? We're so we're spending a lot of resources with no Drake up just to like try and kill Gumiyushi here. And like why are we double TPing two and a half minutes before get on top of Viper, but the peeling Where was the poppy all? I heard the channel. He just cancelled? What happened? That's actually so weird. I actually don't know what happened to his ult. There was no stun. Caps only! Thanks for your tier one subscription. Lee kick? No. Why didn't he move? Oh, the Lee kick was there? No, because he, cha he channels afterwards. He channels right here. He was already kicked. That was really janky. E cancels. Does Lisa? No, Lisa doesn't. E doesn't cancel channels, does it? That would be surprising new information for me. No. I think Poppy just canceled it, guys. I think that was. Uh, I think that was Peanut canceling. I, so, T1 actually double TPs to get this. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Poppy can cancel that. That was really weird. I actually don't know what, what happened there, because I, I also don't know why Peanut would cancel it. Because, look, Peanut comes in, gets kicked right there. Kick is over. I actually just don't know. I guess he must have canceled it. That's the only information I have, guys. It's the Guardian's Vow. It's the Knight's Vow. I think he actually... Yeah, I think that's right. Good job, Vasco RB. That's actually smart of you. That's so wacky, though. Because he's trying to change his knight's vow to Viper, I guess? Yeah, he he changes his knight's vow to Viper, and that cancels his ult. I had no idea that was an interaction. That was really weird to watch. Good job, Vasco RB. Erudite elucidation. We did it. We did it together. Congratulations. Kudos to you. Yeah, it, it canceled his ult. I bet you Peanut did not know that, that, otherwise he wouldn't have done it. I bet you Peanut did not know that. But you are absolutely correct, Vasco. Good eye. It was it was literally n changing Knight's vow to Viper. You're telling me Peanut has never done that before? Uh, this is a new meta where since Frozen Heart was nerfed, a lot of people are going Knight's vow first now, and Knight's vow has never been a first item in a meta before so no i actually just did, i think peanut literally did not know that still has ult well it goes on a 15 second cooldown if it's canceled it goes on a 15 second cooldown guys because that's how poppy ult works so i guess if you cancel it with knight's vow it it's like it was canceled by enemy cc so it goes on 15 second cooldown instead The 
those fall, Peanuts should be able to... There is an old CD refund alive, for Poppy. For T1. Yeah, T1 so quick to respond on the play. Unlike Esports looking for a pick there, but it ended up back... Good job, Vasco. I, I would have just been confused by that forever. That was a really good call. Coming in. Thank you. Yeah, really favorable there for T1. Pick up all those kills, shutting down the virus. See the replay coming out, and yeah, I this think is why sometimes it's good to watch on stream with you guys because you guys catch these things, and I would have just sat there being being endlessly confused. Yeah, okay, so Ox is also confused. He did cancel his ult, but I don't think he knew what he was doing. And if that ult goes off, guys, probably not so many of them die. Peanuts like, lol? I did not know if I use Knight's Vow, it cancels my ult. What the fuck, man? You can cancel your poppy ult by recalling? Yes, I did know that. Save Caria. That's why I was saying goodbye because he was leaving in Fate's Call. Yeah. Um, not because I thought he was di gonna die. I knew the Quest was there. Um, yeah. And I assume Honor Life Esports did. Uh, just feeling they were happy to trade the Varus hold for that. I would be. Yeah, it makes sense that it works that way, guys. It's just that I've never seen that and it's such an unlikely occurrence. I feel like off the back of that play, Zay it makes me wonder how many other item actives cancel Poppy ult like that. And currently, trying to get poised for that 14th. Uh, but remember, they don't have TP now, so we're seeing him move over. Are we going to have some KC VOD reviews soon? Well, I will let you guys vote on LEC games later today. And if that's what you want, if the raccoons want the trash of Rogue versus KC, I will watch it. Control ward actually didn't get this ward, so he has to scan. Uh, what? Bear. Owners on your team. Please. Zoning bear. <laughs> to that brush as well as over the wall. That control ward actually. Did didn't Faker get, get confused? So he Did he have an old man moment? Scan uh, the uh, bear. Owners on your team. Please. Zoning bear. <laughs> Zoning them away. Okay, get rid of Tibbers. Wall bang Tibbers. Uh, yeah, big cooldown unavailable now. I was playing really well, guys. Dude, these peanut peanut pop off games are so fun to watch. When Peanut's good, man, he's my favorite jungler to watch. Like when he's on form like this and he's he's really popping off. Holy shit, he is fun to watch as a player. This seems like the best scenario for I mean, look at the damage. It's literally just the poke. The Jace of the Virus doing everything. They don't even have to fight. Figure just pooped himself a little bit. Don't worry about it, guys. It's only soul point and it's only a chemtech soul. It's fine. Sitting there in a passive positioning, poking you, and you're doing nothing. You will lose. You will fall behind to, unless you eventually get some kind of engage. But you're gonna lose those health bars as long as the poke can land, and that it did for the side of Hamalai Esports. T1 elected to not fight over the Chemtech Drake, which after the poke had landed, probably a good idea. Yeah. I think also the Tibbers probably a and you know, <laughs> consideration. <laughs> you always see, like, Peanut is poppying off, off, indeed. I actually really like the fact that the edge is like. <laughs> What are my thoughts on Taric Jungle? I hate that shit when it's viable. It's so uh, Taric Jungle is so fucking toxic, guys, to the game. And then the Ghost Blade is also great for like kiting away from those situations, for running out of a bottle. He has cleanse as well, so I think Viper just very much knowing he's already gonna do a lot of damage, but now he's just gonna be very hard to actually pin down and get an engage off. I think. T1 realized they didn't have the angle for it there. Yeah, mid Master Yi, Taric Jungle, the actual the funnel comps, actual nightmare. Please never bring that back. A good sight to see. As he now has Peanut over there with him. Or actually that is the light. Figure was 1v9 this whole series. I don't know. Owner really fucked this game up. He'll be fine. Just farming it out. It doesn't look like either team wants to make a big maneuver before this next break does come out. Yeah, I'm so concerned just for Guma and his impact in this game. He is the thing is, though, that, you know, even though they got kills, they had to use uh, two TPs, T1, 
to get those kills, and arguably they shouldn't even have gotten as many as they did if Peanut didn't fuck up his ult there. Um, and they they use their TPs like two and a half minutes before Drake comes out, so they lose soul point anyway. So it's kind of like, what was the point? Yeah, you got some gold, but you didn't really translate that into map or objective control. Poppy, who goes for Knight's Vow and Thornmail, which is kind of the flavor of the month builds yep. uh, when you're going up against a lot of AD. And outside of the burst from the Annie, it's basically all AD. So I think it's Just came back and finished episode two of Shogun. I finished episode three of Shogun last night. That show is very good. We'll be doing it on Nerd Legion, my show with Doa, next week. Even if you don't get like the most value, there's still like a decent amount of healing on the side of T1. Do these games matter if T1 is guaranteed top three? Yes, because the top two seeds get a buy in playoffs. You want to be top two in LCK. Did I watch Dune 2? Yes, my show about Dune 2 is coming out. We'll do probably later today with Doa. Also in Merch Reds. He's up to 221 armor total at this point in time already. So that early game domination from peanut is really going to help him out yeah and obviously when he do you really go with thornmail on poppy uh well poppy i think he's trying to cut down on sundered sky and blade of the ruin king and atrox i think thornmail has value here guys there's a lot of lifesteal sustain on t1 that is the way it goes and we talked about how difficult it is to Weren't you casting during Funnel? No. I was after my time casting. You know, like, it, it's very telegraphed if you're throwing a sealed fate into them and they're running... And you will get an auto attack in there with Aatrox, obviously, during Ultimate. You will get an auto attack in with Lee Sin. At least two of you, maybe even more, are going to be knocked away. Don't you just stay on the mini anti-heal, what, Bramble, and go another one? You can do that, for sure. But it, it is a lot of HP that you gain with Thornmail. Because of the Giant's Belt component. So just in terms of raw HP for him to survive Faker Burst as well as it's not bad. Is this year di disabled in pro play? Yes. What is the worst meta you cast? Probably Black Cleaver meta. That was pretty bad. I mean, the real answer is Goats and Overwatch. <laughs> if, I, if I can say across any game. <laughs> Complicated, you know? Yeah. Cosmic what is insight the exact also? cooldown? Off? Ah, as you said, cosmic insight. Where am I? I mean, <laughs> this is too much. All right, it's back. That okay. was about 30 seconds. Let's so. never question the cooldown again. We're just gonna blind faith, you know? Yeah. It Around has... 30 to 40 seconds. I think it was less. That's, though. that's what I said. Let's just stick with that. Yeah. You know? Why do we have to change? <laughs> Okay, soul now coming up. Total control and vision for Hanwa. Let's say 33.33. All right, for hearing. Uh, repeating, of course. Oh, repeating, yeah. of course, yeah. Maybe the desk can help us out. <laughs> Space. How many these parts? They have a chokehold on this river as we get the zoom out. T1 yeah. have really no entry into this. There's no flank wards, nothing. It is soul. I liked Zerat Banner of Command meta, guys. I'm a macro guy. <laughs> I like that meta. So much more. Unlike these sports, we'll get mid prior and have firm control of the river. So my question is, how are T1 going to approach this? I mean, can they? <laughs> like they gotta do something, but they're not even getting in the river. Unfortunate angle on the Q there. But yeah, this is just gone. As Carry is just gonna face tank and face call out, and that's Chemtexel. Yep. And now you're really not killing Poppy, and you're probably not killing Delight either. Yeah, when Poppy gets low, she will just kind of go in mortal mode. Um, yeah. But still, not the most impactful soul. We've said this enough times, but I think Honor Life Esports definitely upset that they kind of rolled low on the uh, soul dice there, but still just set the Elder Timer in motion. And I, I think T1, like the gold isn't that far apart. They have strong picks on the team. They have a fed Aatrox. They have this strong Annie, but they're just still struggling really with even how to approach the situation. They really haven't found any angle. I want to start reading books slash novels with my dad. My dad is someone who reads a lot, but I'm not as much as my dad. Well, what what kind of books do you like? Let's start there. All right, we're just going to flash all over him. Flash all over Doran, get the kill. Capitalization, Doran just a little bit overextended there. 
uh, and ends up getting taken down. Not sure they'll be able to... Oh, carrier. Oh. <laughs> well, you can take another try, I guess. Or Are we going to see CC teams lay, uh, laying Jace so, against uh, Aatrox? I mean, we already see this, guys. You know, we, we already see this. Look at the last series where... Um, you know, against Gen G, like they were playing a Twisted Fate top, Jace top, uh, Tristana top, depending. Like, there's a lot of ranged top ADs that can be played right now that I think uh, will be pretty beneficial. So they go into the bot side, and then they get over eager, and like, Carry is like, but what if we pressured two sides of the map at the same time when I don't have any wards? And then he's like, what if I just got. CC'd forever, so I couldn't go through. Then Peanut's like, what if I come through here and then smite Faker to slow him? And now then they uh, kill Faker, so Caria just going to die, take Faker with him, and give up Baron. And I think that's just Baron gone, because you have Doran to TP in if you need, but, you know, Ona's so far away, Uma and Zeus are just pushing towers. I'm not sure. They look like they might be coming over to contest, but... It's difficult odds. If Honolife Esports really want, they can just TP and Doran. And they don't have control of the banana brush. Oh my lord. Most How important can I? thing. Long time fan from Morocco. Nice. I fucking love Morocco, dude. I was in Marrakesh a few years ago. I had such a great time. I also cook Moroccan food because I love it. Like there's no there's no time where it's like, oh boy, Annie hit 30 minutes. Like now she's gonna take over the game. Like Aatrox is a bit of a a threat, of course, but... Yeah, I mean, the game's still in arm's length. It's just composition interactions are struggling here. Uh, Doran... Don't you think he's actually he's so close to making it to the Giga Blast Cone. Pick on a Doran, but he is surprisingly tanky. Yeah, the replay was a pick on a Doran. Uh, yeah. That was also an attempted pick on a Doran. He, he's really embraced his role on this team as the punching bag. Just <laughs> <laughs> to, to sit... There absorb wow. all the energy. So different all the pressure. Gen G. Yeah. What, a, what a change, <laughs> you know? It's just hanging out, saying, come at me, bros. Well, actually, it's come at me, T1s. Bros. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, wrong, yeah. wrong matchup. Yeah, I mean, they do a very good job like, oh, of just stun locking Carrier right, forever, but he's also barred, so he's super like squishy. 15 seconds. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Oh, he and like now, Carrier oh. is dead. Feet skull? Just kidding. Uh, owner also getting in there. Now we have a flank from Zayus. This is a very nice flank. He's going to force the flash out of Viper, but... Look at Viper. He's going to free hit over this wall now. Faker's trying to get him. Cleanse is there. Doran is here to push them off. Zayus is just going 1v5 on the top side, but he eventually does get taken out, as you would imagine. Even Aatrox, not OP enough to win that one. How about these sports? A bit shaky, but still a very favorable trade for them. Yeah, to light and peanut just. Does this series impact your power rankings? I don't. There was just nothing they could I, I'm thinking about it. Really, they power, power rankings are very hard right now with uh, some of the wacky results, like JDG versus. Like the the problem with the power rankings is now JDG beat top and HLE beat T1. So everything's a fucking mess now. The best attempt from T1. They found a flank. They found an approach, and then it all. Just kind of backfired. Yeah. Still mind blowing to me that Peanut got his hands on Poppy in this game. <laughs> yeah. I'm still thinking of I like how they banned three junglers, first pick Callista, and just let Peanut have Poppy as if that was a great idea. So he gets the stun into the wall, gets the Q down. Yeah. I'm still thinking about that right now. Force, force out the Callista ult. Zayas comes in for a flank, Viper flashes out. Faker is on the Viper hunt, but he gets so much value here. Okay, instant cleanse from Viper. Doran is there. Beautiful snipe from Viper. On to Karia. I don't even see him. He just guesses where he is. That's just a blind shot, guys. Mega blind shot. And Zayas is trying, man. He's doing his best. He really does not want to tarnish his Aatrox record. But it's looking like that might be what are my favorite Moroccan foods? Uh, it's, uh, it's lamb and like apricot tagine? Fuck yeah. Not I mean, I like so many different kinds, though. I own a tagine, um, so I make I make real Moroccan food. 
it's pretty oppressive. It's pretty ridiculous. Peanut would have to get caught like 1v5 in order to die at this point. Yeah. Big fan from Hong Kong. Have I been here before? Yep. I've been to Hong Kong five times. I've been to Hong Kong a lot. Shout out to my favorite bar in Hong Kong, Ned Kelly's Last Stand in Kowloon. Or Butler. Also, great bar in Hong Kong. That's a Japanese cocktail bar. Ned Kelly's Last Stand is an Irish, or, or it's a, it's technically an, it's an Australian pub. It's the oldest pub in Hong Kong, and they have an excellent uh, big band there that plays with an Irish band leader. So if you like big band jazz music, it is a banger. And well, he's gonna get that Banshee Veil out. Zeka is gonna run away from this one. Yeah, he's like waiting for someone to come by, and it's like not Peanut, anyone but Peanut. <laughs> Really not the poppy, and then Z uh, Zaka comes over. He's like, "Okay, I'll hit that a little bit." Yeah. Um, oh, you know, I thought maybe Ono was gonna get up to that brush, but uh, no, apparently not. It's just not happening, and and they know the angle of attack too, which makes the poke even oh. more deadly because it's so easy to hit when they're all just running at you on the same angle, you know. And how like these sports again? So cold on this one. They're gonna get the charm. Makes the poke even oh. more deadly because it's so easy to hit when they're all just running at you on the same angle, you know. And how like these sports again? So cold on this one. I they finally catch Zeus out of the flank. Nice max range chain of corruption during the CC there. Oh no! He gets caught. That was really weird, actually. Look at that interaction. Because uh, Zeus flashes. And I guess he was trying to flash dash over the wall. Because he flashes and he starts his dash animation, but Peanut it's grabs so him with the E. The wall, oh, that's such a bummer. Peanut, the poppy, once again, more he, he, he didn't have the distance to flash over the wall, so he flashed to the wall and was trying to dash over it, but his dash was canceled by Poppy E. Uh, how was Hong Kong recently? I haven't been since China cracked down on it, so I haven't been in a, a number of years. Set up, you know, they cleared out all the vision. They forced you want to come into them. Landed the pole, got the engage onto the Aatrox, and cleaned up from there. I feel like this has been such a good game for Honor Life Esports. Have people questioned? Oh boy. Why do you wait till end of the season to make a new power ranking? Nah, it's no fun. I need to get make people mad now. I just didn't have time last week. I'll do it this week, guys. Do you think this was T1 winning or H or T1 losing or HLE winning this game? I mean, Hanwha played a very good game. I really like their draft, as I said at the start of things. Uh, Peanut has a really good game. They punished uh, T1 very nicely, but like Owner was also just fucking terrible. Peanut MVP of that game, though, for sure. Never a good feeling. That was one of HLE's better games, though. Zeka had some nice roams. All right, so T1 going to pick blue side again. Yeah, I mean, I think there's plenty of picks that... Okay, so we are actually going for the same bans as last time. And are they really going to pick Callista first again? Surely they're going to ban Poppy here now. Uh, same bans, right, as the last game. Okay, what could they do to change things? Are we literally just going to run back everything? Verisari, okay. Aatrox... Okay, they're going to take the Nico earlier this time because it is a flex for them. And they're going to take the Lee Sin away in response. So no Rel this game. I guess... What? Okay, we're banning Poppy because we picked Lee Sin early even though they have Kalista. I don't know why Hanwa is doing this. Uh, they're banning Poppy because they don't want Poppy to come in and, like, fuck Ari up with Poppy W and possibly something else that they might be doing later. 
Because they could still go back to rail support, which Poppy would be good into. Let's see what they decide to take here on the side of. I don't. I think that Talia is good support, and you know, even though it was obviously. Talia is good into Ari. Okay, we're gonna play for burst. Oh no, we're gonna play with for Xin Zhao. And we're going to go with Delight Rakan. So we just waited because we really want Delight Rakan for some reason. I mean, Delight's a great Rakan player, but... This feels relatively low damage from Hanwha. As a composition. This, I just don't understand why they didn't go back to playing the Poppy. Like, why are we trying to take the Lee Sin away? Owner was fucking terrible on Lee Sin last game. We could absolutely just take poppy or you know guys if we if we're gonna pick Cassante anyway into atrax we could pick Cassante on r3 right we can pick Cassante on r3 May they wouldn't ban jace in that case so they get another ban but even so i don't think they're gonna ban rakan and i don't think they're gonna ban lee sin I just don't understand why we don't go back to Poppy. Like, fuck it, man. Why are we trying to take away the terrible Lee Sin? Very weird. And I feel like if you're not really going to suffer in lane, if you know you have a lane where you're fine playing it, a lot of LCK supports like, just just pick the Rakan. It's good. It's good and engaging. Very reliable. Uh, you guys dominated last game. Just fucking run it back. If you have a lane where you're fine playing it, a lot of LCK supports like, just just pick the Rakan. It's good. It's good and engaging. Very reliable. And they will lock that one in, so I don't think there's nearly as much of a clear advantage as it was in the previous game. But I still think Honolife Esports are very, very happy with what they got. What happens to the power rankings if D plus beat Gen G tonight? Uh, that's not happening, guys. And then that's not. Uh, D plus is fucking so bad at the at the mid and late game that there's no shot they beat Gen G. That's not possible. Hanwha at least has respectable macro. But definitely a pick where you can get a little bit cheeky with the Nico. Yeah, he definitely can. I think this might open up some angles for him to do a bit more even in this game. And Any EU mid laner could hold the top Asian ones? I mean, we know historically the Humanoid and so Caps can, and Caps is looking excellent at the moment. And elected not to go for that and just play the Rel. And see how he... He won fighting! Yeah! How are you Hopefully the crowd will be back in next week. So imagine lethality, which I think is a great call. I think in this lane matchup, you know, despite what I said, like, oh, you can pick Rakan if the lane's not too uh, too much of a struggle, should still be on Guma and Carrier to have the advantage in lane. They're going to be able to achieve prio. And if you land, like, the route from the uh, Nico, and then you mm. chain autos and a Q together... Uh, get the it will we'll be back. Got announced. Good. The Thality is just so broken right now. Um, the amount, the numbers you can get full build, you can have like thirty percent armor pen, like ninety Thality. Yeah, I know they. I know they announced um, the offline servers, and I know they announced. Uh, you know. And even the Cassante still actually takes a fair amount of damage from the. That they'd be back to normal time. Hopefully, after this week with no DDoS, when they've been doing it live, means that the you know it makes sense they would announce that the crowd could come back today. Just launch Q at them. From a while away, press ran, boom, job's done. Boom, boom damage. That's what we're looking for. And he'll be looking to match that poke from Viper. Zeus, oh, that feels bad. Oh, 13 man. and 1. Ruin. The one loss. Unlucky. Yeah, and Zeka. One loss. Unlucky. Yeah, and Zeka. 4 0 on the Ari. Um, yeah, it's like his already at least is looking better. See, their adaption on draft 41 even changed anything. Kind of showed how highly they prioritized this pick. And I feel like one of the things they had issues in earlier the season was what to put Zeka on. Uh, you know, the Corky perhaps not the optimal decision in some of those games. Yeah. They are working for them. Working well. I wonder which minion is Kerry. I wonder if it's the one that was running about really fast. Impossible to know. Erratically. Yeah. <laughs> just no way. Wait, is that is that Baker in the bot lane? Yeah. Whoa, crazy. Hey, it's TP bot. It's crazy. I don't know how he managed that. Oh, range minion. 
This one's a bit more subtle because he at least went in the brush first. Is FaZe Rush to lead normal? Yes. And Delight's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to have to flash. And very early on getting Delight's flash is going to feel... FaZe Rush to Leah, Spellbook to Leah, there are options. That went out of vision to turn into the... Am I still in the US? I'm back in Korea since September. Getting both sums. And now... I mean, this is actually great for Hunter Life Esports because... Fake is going to assume he's safe towards that side of the map, but they don't end up finding an angle, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, Ona ne <laughs> definitely knows Peanut's nearby, but I don't think you win the 1v1. He does uh, not win the 1v1. And Peanut, you don't have to support your lanes. So, good luck. Good invade by Owner. Owner. I see Owner is just Kay. trying to escort him out. And not going to go for the flip. Just wants to go for the trade in the 1v1. And Peanut's just kind of... Just waiting, messing with waiting. him. He's got a nice ward in that brush. That should help him out just a bit. Botlane still being pushed in, and now Faker is going to roam on over, and Pino started his wolf, so... Yeah, and if you look this one away. across the map, T1 have triple lane prio so far. Just gives so much freedom to Ona, and Ona definitely had a rough game one. Uh, it goes without saying, but... Uh, so will the Twitch change affect you? The Twitch change has already happened, and no. It, it doesn't matter, guys, if I am in Korea, because the only thing they did was, like, demonetize Korea, but I don't have Korean viewers, and I'm not getting paid either into a Korean bank account or from, you know, Korean payment sources, so it doesn't affect me at all. You never know who it is. And we've all had that moment when you, like, load into a game where there's a Nico, and you're like, why is Caitlyn mid? And you know the Nico's there, but you just like, you know, Caitlyn swapped it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Brains. Yeah. Not even once. <laughs> <laughs> Said no zombie ever. What do I think of Dandy uh, as a coach? Uh, <laughs> nothing's happening. I mean, this I mean it's thing. not really his fault. I think a lot of the uh, things that are happening on Hanwha. Ari is winning against everyone who's not Tof. Yeah. And do I look at YouTube like chat? Yes, I have been Ari answering questions it. on YouTube not chat. Not many people are doing that right now, so... Um, Definitely a challenge. Doran struggling in this matchup. Um, Zeus, definitely a lot of experience in this Aatrox if we hit on many times, but 17 CS lead, it really comes down to how much farm Doran can pick up out of this wave, but certainly not 17. Um, and he at least baited Zeus into taking two tower hits, so at least the health is a bit more even. This is all wave down, uh, yeah, top lane. And, uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zayas can maybe cheat a yeah, recall here, actually, if he pushes this in. It's fine. There's just a little white square. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, Takes the final wave. Should go back to recall? Yeah, that's, oh. not, that's not a thing. Not supposed to do that. It's not, it's not allowed, actually. <laughs> he was just scouting in the river, you know? It's weird. It just looks so scary. Like, it's just going to go come down and consume Viper and Delight, you know? <laughs> yeah. Big white square. Here comes Peanut. Not, he's just gonna. He's afraid of the freeze, so he's gonna TP back. Break the freeze. I know where Peanut is. Yeah, there's been a bit of ebb and flow in the. You know, the lanes have gone in favor of Hunter Life Esports now, so it does have a bit more prio, but still a little bit scary to start that one up. Do I have to pay income taxes to the Korean government? No. I have to pay to the almighty American government. Because my money's coming in from American companies. I have seen so many of these matchups where they just both pop out, do some heavy trading, no one dies, and then just continue business as usual. Oh, nice charm landed here from. Do you think it is a coincidence that Goldborg is not on the LEC broadcast this week right after the quick shot news dropped? No. Nope. I mean, he announced at the beginning of the split that he was going to have a much smaller role in LEC anyway, which I assume is because of all this. Any this because of all the stuff with quick shot. So I don't think he's gonna stick around. Yeah, that play would have been sick if that was Doran's turret. Um, yeah. Kind of just the wrong way. escorted Zayas to safety and went, here you go. Um, but it does end up being a trade of sums, trade of ults, and Doran's ghost is lower cooldown. So overall, he's the beneficiary of that play. Um, oh, the light. Nice dodge there. Has his flashback up. Peanut just. Getting some trading damage in. Carry is pretty low at this point, but so is Delight. He's not going to land the Q either. As Peanut thinking about a steal. But that's 1v4. And I think he's just going to have to get this one up. And that he will. See one big commitment to that first streak, and they get an Inferno. Yep. So nice little early payoff. Uh, able to get that one. It's Chemtech. Dragon second as well. So won't be a Chemtech soul. 
Uh, even though it really didn't dismay Hunter Life Esports that they picked up the worst soul last game, but definitely higher priority. Yeah, it's, really it's the, the quick shot stuff is super tame. So strong. Like, is already it, you know what pisses it's me off, guys? It's also just satire. You know what I mean? Like, what quick shot is doing is satire. <laughs> it's so mind boggling that they would fire you for satire on Nazis. It's literally making fun of Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's designed it is satire designed yeah, I mean, to make kind of Nazis look ridiculous but people don't understand satire anymore so I guess this is how it's gonna be might as well get a big reset like that around the dragon time as uh Oh, it's back to this again. See, Carrie is I like... just remember when we had the Nico jungle last summer and Canyon was just like spamming it. Yeah. And he would, he'd like just so obnoxiously so that it was just permanently like there was just like an emoting whoever. Mm -hmm. I think it was Leona who was copying one game and he was just spamming them nonstop. Oh, Peanut. Hey, it's four gold. Yeah, you, you paid off. That is owner's blue buff, it turns out. Owner's playing a, a lot better this game now that he has more agency. The the mid, the like, the bot lane losing last game, I think, really threw T1 for a loop. They, they don't do well when they have losing bot lanes because they play so strongly through bot lanes. And now owner's playing Jin Zhao is very strong early skirmishing. So he can do some damage in the jungle, counter jungling. Maybe if Faker decides to honestly or something, then you can commit, but... Oh, he's right there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they think that. You'll never understand why Goldborg posted it. I think it was an accident, guys. I don't think Goldborg did it. Uh, Maybe he didn't listen to the audio or something before he posted it. That's my theory. Or he didn't hear it over the music. I really don't think Goldborg did that intentionally. I really don't think he did. I just think he made, he was dumb and made a mistake. Why did Viper replace Hale with Comet this game? Because I think he knows he can't win an all-in versus Callista Nico when he has a Rakan. So it's better just to poke for damage. Let's take a look at who has the most gold. It's... You know, I was looking through it. I didn't get time. I think it was Zekka. Probably is highest, yes. Pina is here. Doran gonna pull him back to late. Also here, Zeus in a lot of trouble. He's got some help on the way, but flashed on with the charm and just no cues available. First blood goes over to Peanut once again. And yeah, the rest of them just a little bit too late on the rotation. Yeah, a lot committed there. You can kind of see the light was in a rush to make the play happen before they got collapsed on, but uh, ended up missing his W there onto Zeus after being the flash. But uh. I'm going to say it, if that Q hit from Guma... I look forward to the podcast he mentioned he might be doing soon. Um, he is doing yeah, I mean, he probably has some sort of NDA with Ryan, unfortunately. Obviously maxing it with Thalgy, but a Ghost Blade completed. I think, like... I mean, if I had to guess, guys, and I don't know anything, but given the amount of time it took for Quickshot to announce this, even though this happened at Worlds last year, so it was like six months ago. And the fact that he wasn't on LEC, but he was still a full, t like he he was still like allegedly employed by Riot, like he didn't change his social media. And all he was posting is like <laughs> videos of him snowboarding with his wife and like chilling. I, I have a feeling that either because of German employment law, either Riot was forced to give him some sort of crazy exit package or I, he might have sued them frankly like if they tried to fire him because of that he might have actually sued them and won now, i don't know what happened but th the fact that he's like so calm about all of this and how long it took for this announcement to come out it makes me think that there was either some sort of uh severance negotiation going on or there was there was an actual lawsuit that he probably won um, so, I mean, he seems fine. 
not long enough for a successful lawsuit, they could have settled it. They could have settled it. He, he could have filed and then Riot could have settled it. Something up in mid. Baker does have his flash. So, yeah, I, I, I think, like, he doesn't seem too disturbed and, like, he didn't seem like he was too broken up during the entire process because he was just, like, chilling, going on vacation and having a good time. But it took long enough, and they didn't announce his layoff with the rest of the layoffs, that there was there was something clearly, like, settlement-wise or severance-wise going on behind the scenes. So I think he probably made it out okay. That's what I think. Zay has flashes. Oh, boy. No ults for anybody there, Doran or Zayas. Yes. Nice, nice TP from Zeka. Part of the Aatrox, and that's two times in a row. Zayas has been taken down. Uh, T1 will move towards this dragon. Will I be watching any of the CS major? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the fact that Ari's been the ult, I don't see Honor Life Esports contesting this. Yeah. We'll have to see what the soul is at the end of this, but Doran is going to pick up two plates solo. Yeah, two plates and a kill. Pretty decent reward, and it is a mountain soul, so very high value. Uh, not too many like massive tanks in it, but I feel like Mountain Soul, it's just good for everyone. Yeah, it's just a good soul. Everybody's going to be building some resistances, and if you can get the soul, you get the shield on everyone. Oh, um, that is a lot of damage. Yeah. No rend, even. Light doesn't uh, resist that very well at the moment. Yeah, he's uh, a little bit vulnerable to that armor. I mean, that lethality. <laughs> he doesn't have armor, yeah. hence he's vulnerable to that. Yeah. Vulnerable to armor. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> He's literally tweeting about anime immediately after the announcement. Yeah, I think uh, I think Riot, he got a lot of money from Riot. If I had to guess, guys, I think Quick Shot. He got a lot, and he deserves it, man. He's been there for fucking twelve years or whatever. It's crazy. Riot is such a piece of shit company. I, I you know, after the whole hundred million dollar settlement, after like. The Chinese ownership after the fucking now Saudi Arabia bullshit that they're trying to pull after the layoffs after it's just impossible for any executive to get fired no matter what the fuck they do the fact of what they did with Quickshot I don't understand how any Riot employee can be like yeah real super cool company that I work for I feel very ethical about working for this company so nuts. I, what 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 is what does Riot have to do before people who have morals actually quit this company? What what do they have to do at this point? Oh boy! Nice flip by Faker. Yikes! Gets 100 comboed from there. Guma nearly dies as well to the poke from Viper. And now he's kind of out of the fight as now this front line Viper just too good, man. Uh, owner ult oh, fucked him. Nice cleanse. I was watching Viper, dude. Wall. Uh, Viper can't auto. He's not in range. Nicely played by Faker. And that will be a favorable trade for T1. They might be able to pick up this Rift Herald, although... Yeah, I don't think they have the health bars to do it. They often go for a reset, but Peanut taken out first, giving T1... What happened to Dash? Oh, they just uh, they just murdered yeah, him off the broadcast for no reason. For some reason, that would have hit him, but uh, not quite in range there. Nice attempt by Fake here, though. And a swing and a miss. Oh, my God. Just the fact you can just Q and just one-shot the casters is insane. And, yeah, Peanut got banana bushed. Um, he did. Just got one shot with no ability to play the game. We did see the ult from Viper and the charm chunking Guma out. So, but this is the thing with this lethality cluster. You don't need to be in auto range. So even though he's low, he can kind of just sit back, case in the auto. Yeah, the, the thing, this uh, new Callista build that we're seeing, like Pays was playing it too. Is this Q Max Callista? I wasn't paying attention, guys. I'll be honest. So, yeah, it's the Q Max uh, opportunity. Oh, it's this time it's Yoma's first, but yeah, with Q Max you don't actually have to get in range to do damage. This is a result of the red nerfs that have happened. 
So like, you actually can do some level of meaningful damage, just kind of chucking Qs occasionally. Pace built it into T1 in their last series uh, with opportunity first. Why don't you appear as a guest or something in Lull Park? Well, they won't. Why would they hire me and why would I do that? There's there's two, two, two different questions. They don't want me on the broadcast and I don't want me on the broadcast, so no thanks. Yeah, Doran just gets cut out here. Faker has a very nice wall. Thank you! I cannot read your name. It's in Chinese. Sorry. But I appreciate your YouTube membership. Yeah, today pretty good in the Dixante altogether. Um, just in Rabble Deer having a ton of value. And Guma now has opportunity finish. So two items in this cluster. And the Thality cluster just spikes so hard early. Zoning away Zeus, I guess. Not, not even How long have I been doing streams of pro so gameplay? Uh, I've been doing it all this year and also Worlds last year. Oh, you're you're the fan from Hong Kong. Nice. Hope you're doing okay there, man. Like Hong Kong is a little bit rough since the crackdown. Don't type anything that would get you in trouble. But I was actually there during. I was in Hong Kong during the protests in uh, 2013. 20, no, 2014, 2014, uh, when they blocked off all the highways in Admiralty. It's pretty crazy. I was walking around during uh, in all the protest camps. So very sad, I think, what happened in Hong Kong. Have you ever called in the eight Hotline League? Yes, and Travis deleted that episode. Not the most ethical, but uh, it works. It's fine. And now they've kind of given over control off the dragon area. And I feel like Hon Life Beasts can't really afford to get this one up. They don't have the <laughs> Thank you for your hatchet hall, Rex. Cornbread was amazing. Dude, it literally is the best cornbread. I've, I am a cornbread fiend. And that is the best cornbread I have had in my entire life. Taking control of this brush, at least. And they are situated in the... Why? What the fuck? Uh, well, here, here, guys. Why don't you guys call in to Hotline League and ask Travis why he deleted the episode with me on it? Banana brush. Yep. The dragon banana brush. Why don't you ask him? They still have a control award for Peanut that they can place down. Yeah. CT1 trying to take over that part of the map. I don't know. Meanwhile, some nice trading here. We don't have Leandri's for Faker in this game just yet. Yeah, Actually, don't do that. He's guys. Travis is so close to throwing in the towel right now. We just don't want to give him any more attention because he's he's almost done. The 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 vultures are circling, guys. Don't help. He's 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 in the water. Do not throw him the lifesaver. Do not throw him the lifesaver of viewership. Okay, mid is pushed in right now. Faker's on the flank looking for a wall angle. Faker still has been very good. He's trying to find the right angle to bisect their composition. There it goes. He's going to hop over. They've isolated Doran. They're staying away so he can't. Doran can't actually carry somebody over the wall right now. Nice kiting. 
get the angle onto the Drake, get some good poke damage down. Zayas on the flank. Peanut kicks him out. Oh, he smites just a hair early. Tries to get the Q2 damage with smite, but he just miscalculates. It's 140, and owner gets the smite down. They've also got this Rift Herald in mid to try to get a push. Um, I don't know this uses to tank it up. Did you enjoy Dune 2? Uh, the video of me and Doa talking about Dune 2 should come out later today. The knockback from the Herald when you bounce out of it is so long. I think you're probably okay, but they are conscious. Zeka still has ult, so does the light. Which kind of leads on to my Real question is, you and Travis meet in alley. Can he take you out or will you fold him in half? Guys, I have been doing Muay Thai for eight years and I am currently jacked. There is a 0% chance that Travis can win a fight versus me. Like, zero. Everyone's kind of cautious not to give an opportunity to ult them over. You can see Owner backs away and Doran gets chunked out. They try and put damage on it. Owner doesn't work that well. And still, you know, that kid's light, not really making much of the situation. Yeah. Drake went down to like 24. So, very close on the steal from Peanut. Got a nice amount of burst coming in here onto Zekka. So I swear he dashed through those rocks, but I guess he already got stunned. Yeah, he got knocked through, so, so it's fine. Yeah, totally okay. But he did have the spirit rush. And, uh,. Yeah, I mean, now T1 on soul points at this uh, point Max in time. deadlift? I actually don't know what my max Honestly, deadlift yeah. is now. Um, I was weightlifting this morning, but you guys have to remember that I do more high-intensity uh, high interval training. So I do, like, lower weights, but lots of reps with very little downtime because I'm training, to, I'm training as a kickboxer. Not as, like, I'm not trying to get, like, you know, I'm not doing, like, three sets of five reps i'm doing like three sets of 12 reps with very little rest so i was doing deadlifts today and i did three sets of 12 at around 180 it's in kilograms because i'm in korea but i do it with very little downtime so what's my one rep max i don't know probably like over 300, I would guess. But that's not how I train. And that's not how any kickboxer trains. Yeah, and as you said, the light not been 100% on this Rakan so far. Zayas just doing so much damage. Once again, even though he got set behind in lane, still feels like he's making pretty big impact in these fights. And Peanut... Going from POG to really so, I, I really do. I try and go for higher reps, lower weight. How tall am I? I am six feet, um, and I weigh like 185, 185. And you know, I respect you, Brendan, for not mentioning the rel. I thought you were gonna bring up there and be like, "Hey, imagine if you could have picked another pick in this situation." Well, rel. Yeah. Maybe next time. And in this situation, you know, double knocker from Dorm, pretty nice. Uh, and then delight. Yeah, this is the second time he's just not been super sharp on it. Normally something he's really good off. And I'm not sure it would have made a massive difference to the outcome, but it would have at least made the kill quicker and potentially changed things around. Uh, we're, yeah, we're just looking at a pretty big snowball right here, guys. Uh, it's been a much more dominant game, much better game from owner. Really nice early invades from him. And if he is able to get now we're just going to head into the Mountain Soul. That early game really is key, and now we've got the opportunity up onto the Callista. They were able to win and play through bot side and do jungle invades on bot side jungle. I just don't understand this draft from HLE when it really felt like they have had things working. Like, Doran, I think, has actually played. I'm surprised we didn't see the TF in top side. Like, why are we getting Cassante here? Like, is that really the counter pick we want? And be very cautious about yeah, he's played. Two, I thought so. Doran's played two games of Twisted Fate. Like, why are we playing Cassante in top? It's just fucking weird. Like, why are why are we banning Poppy? You just let them ban Jace, but why are we why are we playing Cassante? I think last time we didn't see them use a lot of their engage tools. The poke maybe came down a little bit too late. Like they got some late poke on our owner. I really need to see them start putting down the damage early on. 
Uh, particularly, like, that's the thing is that, yes, Guma can do a ton of damage with his lethality build, but his range is nowhere near Vipers. Uh, and you're not going to be able to just consistently fire off long range arrows to chunk people out. So I want to see Viper get value out of that. He doesn't have the mana immunity yet, but does have the pulley stack here. Okay. Two big ults traded. I would probably say the Ari ult more important, though, for the fight. Yeah. You know, if this were Do you keep in touch with double if no? Nope. Can't remember the last time I talked to him. I, I, I can honestly tell you guys that having conversations with double lift is very low on my life priority list. I can think of 10,000 better things to do with my time. Fakers Talia has been really quite good in the games that I've seen, especially his wall placement. Like, T1 is so good at engaging, generally speaking, as a team, but the way they conceptualize these setups is really just excellent. Yeah, Zekka has no ult, so he's just dead on the side. It doesn't matter. Faker dies. He's already done his job. Oh, does it? The throws? Zayas is still huge, though. Yeah, let's get out. Wow, what happened here? I mean, they get to the Drake pretty late because they're split pushing in the top side. Karia also just completely wastes his ultimate. Holy shit. What? I would probably say the Ari ult more important, though, for the fight. Uh, I'm not sure about that one because you have Callista ult to throw Nico in. Like, here's the thing. Like, Ari ult can be important, but the value of Rocket Belt, Flash, Callista ult with Nico ult is absolutely enormous. Like, the amount of distance you can cover to get a multi-band Nico ult is crazy with that combo of sums, items, and the, the Callista ult ability. Like, imagine if Nico wasn't chunked out and was capable of getting into this fight. Like, he doesn't get anything from it. He has to actually just scoop up Carrie and Carrie throws himself backwards. So Nico just doesn't do anything here. Very not good trade. Stealth! Thank you for your Twitch Prime. No freeloaders. I agree. All you freeloaders. You can still freeload, but freeload with your Bezos bucks at least, guys. Freeload with your Bezos bucks at least. Do I prefer tie clinch or head kicks? I, I like clinching a lot. I mean, I, I can do both. My uh, I have very flexible hips. I can actually, I'm six feet. I can kick guys up to about six five in the head. Which is very surprising to the guys that I spar with, let me tell you. I have very flexible hips. Uh, but I do love clinch. I sub for Twitch Prime for C9 versus SR, but I, I didn't get it. I need the trash. Well, maybe you can get some LEC trash later today. Is there any footage online of me training? No, but I could probably get some for you. My current gym in Korea is kind of trash, though. Yeah, gives him a nice chance. I mean, this game is far from over. Yes, T1 are sitting pretty comfortably, but the fight is going to leave them kind of scratching their heads a little bit, I'd say. You know, they had a pretty decent angle from Zeus. The wall was decent once again. But um, it's kind of got Cassante <laughs> at the end of it. You know, you know What's what next in store for Nerd Legion? Dune like 2 coming today. Here, here is the here's the new Nerd Legion. Uh, I have it right here. Here's the next like month, uh, six weeks on Nerd Legion. Dune two, Shogun, three body problem, Constellation, Ninja Kamui, Rebel Moon Tune to Fallout. That's through the end of April. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Stop Varus ulting 
the Zin's out. It's just not weak. This Does is your like wife appreciate time. your flexible hips? You the know first it. Time at least they chunked him, but the two times since, I mean, that time missed because the big treads meant the stun didn't even last long enough. Speaking of stuns. Okay. You know, fast reactions from Zeka, but it just never feels good. Um, this is like the second time in a row he's just burned his ult defense. <laughs> yeah. Now you don't have your ult, so. Yeah, I mean, it is so low cooldown with sure. Malignant. Show my to Eclipse in your Instagram. All right, well, maybe I'll do that. Not anything to fight for specifically soon, but yeah, definitely not the best feeling. Yeah. Nice little uh, angle, I guess, from Faker to spot him out. I guess maybe there was a ward over the wall. I'm not sure exactly how he saw him, but either way. Ultra instinct. Yeah, perhaps. So knows where all the enemies are at all times. Yeah, he saw Zekka walking over Vision. Any chances of Mega Trash and KC versus Rogue? If you guys vote for it, I will watch it after this series. They really want to keep that mid tier. You can vote on any of the LEC games that were played today, and I will watch whatever you vote for. Both times Doran has TP'd in, he's like, I'm not giving this over. I'm not sure you're gonna get a third teleport to defend. It's pretty low on health, but for now, it's still alive. I mean, they hold on to the turret. They keep Viper on his his post, which is just in mid clearing waves and holding onto it as well. But now you don't have Doran in the side lane for a potential Baron play. Not sure if T1 really want to go for the Baron at this point in time, but the I mean, game it's is T1. close. It's T1. It is, yeah. but I don't know, especially after that last fight. I'm not sure how confident they'd be. Yeah, I feel like it's only situations where T1 are winning. Oh man, the fourth time. Come on, Viper, please. <laughs> um, I feel like if T1 are winning, then they want to go for a Baron so they can get an advantage to close out the game. But if T1 are behind, then they... Oh, oh onto Guma. There's a lot of people around, but Peanut doesn't seem to care. Look at that damage follow-up from Viper, too. Yeah, and now Guma's just out of the fight. He's just solo now. Yeah, they could go for this, potentially. I mean, I he's going to have to recall and teleport... Uh, sorry, walk back in and have teleport. Uh, okay. Um... <laughs> you know, that would be a pretty good tool to have for the Baron. Everybody you know? is way overexcited right now, okay? Yeah. Like <laughs> I actually think this is scary for Hanalei Esports because Guma's making his way over. They don't have Viper or Delight ult. Those are big cooldowns not to have. Yeah, and, and this is, is not a from the top lane. This is not a fast Baron. Yeah, it's a slow Baron, in fact. As now the wall is going to come in. They are going to try to turn this one around. Stun from the rocks. Bit of damage into Owner. Who will struggle a bit into the poke before he uses that ult. Just here comes Carrie against There the you go. That's what it looks like when you actually have the Nico ult. And look at this. Doran also there you go. They it the turns out that the Nico ult is at, Oh wow, three man W two from Lee or from Jin Zhao. Finally, alright. This game should have been over a long time ago, but Nut still on the run. We'll meet a similar fate. Very bro He's gonna keep running. I don't think he has a chance again back in this barn pit. Knock up. <laughs> you know that would be a pretty good tool to actually. Guma, there's a lot of people around, but Peanut doesn't seem to care. Look at that damage follow up from Viper too. Yeah. And now Guma's just out of the fight. He's just solo now. Yeah, they could go for this potentially. I mean, I he's gonna have to recall and teleport. Uh, sorry, walk back in and have teleport. Uh, Delight, dude. Um, <laughs> you know, that would be a pretty good tool to have. What? This, this game is a lot of wasted support ults. Right now, okay? yeah. like, <laughs> I actually think this is scary for Hanalei Life Esports because Guma's making his way over. They don't have Viper or Delight ult. Those are big cooldowns not to have. Yeah. Nah, they should not be doing this. Lane. This is not a fast Baron. Yeah. It's a slow yeah. Baron. Yeah. It's a lethality, it's Varus. It's not going to be a fast Baron. Try to turn this one around. Stun from the rocks. Bit of damage into owner. Will struggle a bit into the poke before he uses that ult to see. Here comes Carrie gets so the double good. knock up and the root. Look at the timing too with Zayas. T one's engages, especially um, you know, the coordination between Zayas owner and Faker is so such a core part of T one's gameplay. Like as far as engages go, T one probably has the best jungle mid engage synergy in the world. Owner and Faker's combos are just so good a lot of the time. After viewing LCS playoffs, are LCS teams more or less fraudulent? Yeah, no, they were bad the whole time. <laughs> it's just more apparent in the best of five. I really think the lack of the ult from the virus and the Rakan makes such a big difference in Honor Life Esports team fighting power. No real opportunity to get down poke, and second misses that initial charm, which allows him to trade heavily on him. Faker kind of corrals them in, and this is such a beautiful setup with the not only Zayas threatening from the flank, but then Carrier ends up threatening over the wall. And there was a ward, but he was just so quick. 
to implement the combo. You know, we see the Cassante get focused out, and then Zayas is just causing mayhem in the back line. And this flash triple slow from Owen, a super high value. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't even think they should have been there. <laughs> but um, they had control of the Baron Pit. They wanted to turn, but the second everything misses and you're just getting engaged upon by sticking around for too long, things are going to go south very quickly. And now T1 with the Baron. Trying to make a fight here is Hamalife Esports on the Mountain Soul, but uh, you're losing turrets, you're losing yeah. control of the map very quickly. T1 don't need I this dragon. Need you know, obviously Hamalife Esports long way away from Soul. Oh, this. Yeah, he's gonna catch out Zeus, and this time the chains get huge value as he even flashes at the end. I know Aatrox is strong, but yeah, he, he was- I really dead. seen much LPL this time. year. Dude, you're yeah, missing out. The fucking Milky Way arc is amazing. Also, BLG is really fun to watch. Yeah, helps that uh, he got caught out now. Uh, Doran is taking a bunch of damage, actually. Look at the poke coming out. It's now Charm comes out, but Doran is Zaya still has ult, though. Or, I mean, owner still has ult. Helps that uh, he got caught out now. Uh, Doran is taking a bunch of damage, actually. Look at the poke coming out. It's now Charm comes out, but Doran immediately dies. And Peanut super low as well. The Jesus. damage. From the side of T1 is just huge. All right, there we go. All right, it's over now, finally. Yeah, a little bit sloppy there for a bit. Could have gotten Soul one Drake sooner yeah, had Karia not gone for the weird ass yeah, so it's trade. Dies, not him. That's how it works, right? Oh, he actually gets the double root there. Forces Viper's cleanse, and now they can just oh Viper. Oh man. And Faker's here as well. Faker is pumping so much damage. I mean, look at his build. It's just damage. Here we go. He's got E again. Chain of Corruption goes down, but he still has the challenge mark on him, so it's a quick E, and it's the end of the game. Figure still is pretty fucking clean. Yeah, it's good. Sorain lol. Hi, thank you for your Twitch Prime sub. You should all consider subscribing to Monte Cristo. Walking in the front door and nobody's home. They're like, huh. Well, I guess I'll make myself comfortable. Is it the best five dollars you will ever spend? Yes. <laughs> Guaranteed. And that's two free inhibitors. They had a snack and now uh, I guess they're just gonna go home. Baron's timed out, but they can honestly just move towards the bot lane. I give you like a hundred hours of free content a month, guys, across my streams, shows, everything I do. The value is crazy. That was a lot of damage. The whole team is there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're getting away from this one, Peanut. Nice kick. But Carrie has something to say about that. And that'll be the end of him. Just caught out in the jungle. Thought he could leave his base. Yeah, and there's no time pressure on T1 here. They can just wait for the super minions to push in. And Hot Life Esports, this tower's already so low, they're dropping the wall. Yeah, they're just diving in. Two there it goes. Down. Uh, he does get bounced on over. Beautiful timing on the but wall. And Doran is, is quite tanky. Yeah, but they're just hitting the inhibitor at this point in time as Zeus. It's going to go down. They do take out the Aatrox, but it's three inhibitors down. Yeah, very hard to get back in this position. Oh. Aw, oh, yeah. Thank you for your uh, Twitch oh, Prime yeah. sub, oh, Mivek9. Sojin! You're you're now over on YouTube as well. Holy shit, doubling up. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Am I reviewing BLG versus Weibo today? No. Uh, I'll do a depending on time, guys. I'm gonna do. We'll probably do one LEC game after this series is done, and then I've got to watch the LCK live. So I'm gonna go grab some more coffee. I'll be back in just a minute. We'll, we will uh, finish it up.
Is it pretty late in Korea? It's 2 p.m. I've already gotten up, guys. Made myself a kimchi and steak quesadilla for lunch. It's delicious. Went to the gym. Went to the Jim Chilbang, which is the Korean bathhouse in my apartment complex. It was glorious. Went to the sauna after working out. It was great. How do you keep these hours with having the babies? What do you mean these hours? It's 2 p.m. Stozy pokes. Also, I have a wife. And parents-in-law. I just ordered AG1. Do you mix with liquid IV? I mix creatine with AG1, and then I drink liquid IV when I'm working out mostly. Let's get into the next game, guys. What is the champion you most enjoy watching on Pro Play? Poppy, hell yeah. Korean Spa versus Japanese Hot Springs, they're both great. I thought I was living in Colorado now. Uh, I will be living in Colorado, but I'm in Korea at the moment. Am I natural? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't do any steroids. I, I use creatine, that's about it. Creatine and protein powder. Not. I, I don't really... I. I I don't have some sort of psychological hang up where I need to get like Uber Jack guys. I don't care. I literally work out because I enjoy Muay Thai and to stay healthy. And I want to be good at the sport, but I'm fucking 37. I don't need to take steroids. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I have a wife. I'm not trying to be jacked on Instagram. <laughs> what, what's the point? You'll be living in Colorado in a month, Sojin. Where are you going to be? You're welcome, Show X Codes. Happy to provide. Yeah, creatine isn't a steroid. It's, uh, it's a naturally occurring enzyme, guys. Colorado Springs, nice. Beautiful down there. Yeah, I mean, I take supplements, but I, I'm not interested in steroids. I think the steroids are ridiculous. Everybody's down in the springs. Yeah, I'll be in Denver eventually. What's my favorite music? I mean, I listen to a bunch of music. Uh, what have I been listening to recently? A cow punk band called the Vandaliers. And Poor Man's Poison. But I like a lot of things. I've been listening to the front bottoms recently, too. All right, let's go. Game three, everybody. Game three. Do you think Arcane based their villain on me? Yes, I think Silco was 100% based on me. I, I, I don't understand how they could... I mean, it is... Exactly, it looks exactly like me. It's crazy. Overlooked, and you know, I'm gonna say maybe some T1 fans pretty happy. What did I put in your coffee? Cream or milk and sugar? Fucking nothing. I drink it black like a real man. Because I buy good coffee. Putting things in your coffee. Who are you? All right. So Hanwa gonna be on blue side for the first time in this series. And they're still... Okay, so we still see Ori. Now they're going to ban the Callista because they don't want to first pick it. And Sejuani is maybe up now. Let's see if they ban it. Okay, so they get rid of Vera. So now we actually have more junglers. So Sejuani and Maokai are up, which weren't up previously. Ash is also up. So they're going to take the Maokai first up here. Very powerful pick for Peanut. Aatrox, Ori. So we're not going to take the Ash early. Intriguing. We're going to take the Jace so it can't be banned out. And we're going to take the Talia away. All right. All right. Lee Singa. So now are we going to ban Ash? Caitlyn. Okay. That's a... Could be a Caitlyn. Always dangerous with Gumiyushi. Caitlyn Ash. Okay. So we're really going deep into... Oh, no. Moments. This is one of those moments before disaster. Please, Guma. You can't play Zeri. You are fucking... So bad at Zeri. Yeah. Yes, Smolder. No. 
but something that's kind of sl uh, slid through is the Nautilus. And Carry a historically very good Nautilus player. Okay. Oh, God, he's going to play Zeri now, isn't he? Because he has no other scaling carry. Okay. Guma, please play Jinx. Please play Jinx. 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 Yes, Jinx. No. Yes. No. Yes. It's a tricky one, honestly. Zeri definitely syncs well with the composition, but both are going to be a pretty strong cleanup. After that initial pick in the fight. No! Oh, God. Why? 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 He's so bad at playing Zeri, and T1 is so bad at playing with Zeri as a team. Dude, just think about the Jinx comp. You get a fucking free lane and a smaller Alistair. You win level one with Nautilus Jinx. Not only that, but you can get Jinx reset so easily. Look at this. Single target CC, single target CC, single target CC. All you do is kick somebody and then Ari charm them or Nautilus uh, ult them. And then you get Jinx resets. And then she can just run at the enemy team. There... There's not even good pick potential for Jinx here. You know, they don't have a lot of flankers. You can stay very far back. Can Zeri run along a Talia wall? Yes, Zeri can go through Talia wall. Zeri can jump over Talia wall. Yes. Does Jinx outrange Smolder the rocket? I think so. I don't know for sure. But, like, you know who doesn't outrange range, uh, Smolder? Anybody on T1. Any of them. And yeah, they've got some good flanking. They've got some good backline threats. Oh, uh, I I think the Jinx was the play, guys. Even even fucking T1 knew that the Jinx was the play. Why did they pick Zeri? Yeah, I think Zeri is much more meta nowadays as well. And Jinx is so much better, especially for T1. Gumiyushi is a fucking legendary Jinx player. And they do take it here. But pretty interesting definitely a, a very scrappy composition from the side of t1 whereas a bit more control on the side of homo life esports a lot of control with alistair um talia and maokai for yeah. zone and then you have like a, a nice amount of poke with talia and jace and even the smolder who's going to be hyperscaling yeah you got the two bodyguards in the alice and the maokai just the oh man oh man oh man oh man oh man oh man oh man, oh man. And nothing new there you need to really be driving forwards and i'm gonna be real Zeri, Nautilus into uh, Smolder, Alistair. Yeah, it's what really, guys, also that Guma you just... I mean, look. We don't, we don't even... Here, watch. Gums. Gums with a Z would be a great gamer name, but it's actually Guma Yushi. Okay, here we go. Da -da 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 -da. Zeri. 23 games, 60.9%. You might be thinking that's good, but look at his win rates on all of his other champions and also just the eye test, guys. Like, the eye test. Who knew he was this bad on Kaisa, though? I didn't remember that. Uh, and this was in with the Zeri is Giga Broken meta, right? This is in the Zeri is Giga Broken, and if certain players like Pays or Ruler or Aiming get Zeri, they just absolutely pop off. Yeah, let's look at Ruler for comparison. Yeah. He's got a lot more games and a lot higher win percentage. Or pays. And they were on worse teams, too. Pays, higher number of games, higher win percentage. Uh, who else? Aiming. Let's 
Zeri, higher win percentage, much higher percentage of games. Do I know what the Azir, the deal with Azir? Uh, I don't know exactly. It has something to do with this, is uh, slide, I think. Well, it certainly might just do that here, Ox, as Faker has gone on to Ari now for the first time tonight. Let's see how it does go as we hop on the rip for game number three. Level life esports, and I do is that. But we're fighting. T1, and I do is that. T1 fighting. Yay. All right. The WQ combo lags the game. Will Azir be enabled for playoffs? Yeah, it, it was a. Uh, I, I, it'll be a different patch. I think playoffs is 14 6. It's going to be a series, it's going to go to three. This was going to be it. Yeah. Um, and goes invisible during TP. It's something like that. There's some visual bug on his slide, I think. If T1 win, then Genji and T1 are secured in round two. They get the double elimination. Did you watch the new show, Shogun? I've seen the first three episodes. It is very good. Uh, this coming week, we will do a Nerd Legion on it, where you can hear my thoughts. They didn't manage to do so in the last series up against them. I think everyone was looking at Honor Life as being the team to challenge the top two. And the possibility to deny is just another T1 Genji final, which... <laughs> I'd beat you in Muay Thai. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we're, we're I'll take your word for it. Ooh. Nope. Uh -oh. Zeka just not in range. Peanut just gonna dab on the haters. Yep. And that... I don't think I've ever seen that emote from Zeka. What was that? Oh, I didn't actually catch it. I was looking at the runes. Triple phase here you go. Here's the culture channel. Board. Subscribe here. And if you want to see my thoughts on Dune 2 and Shogun and many other topics. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom. Gave Viper so Smolder. Funny. I know, dude. This is so doomed, actually, for T1. <laughs> they they fucked around on draft just to fucking R5 Zeri kill me. Dude, if I was watching this live and I saw this draft, I would immediately go and just bet against T1. Just instantly. Because there's no way, like, after this draft, I'm thinking, having seen the rest of the series, especially now that Doran's back on a range matchup in top lane. And we have the Maokai for Peanut as well. This is, this is so good. So good for Hanwha. It's exactly how they want to play the game, and it's exactly how T1 don't want to play the game of League of Legends. Is he going to be able to play this matchup? Already getting a decent trade, although he did take some damage on the backside of that one. And uh, it's going pretty evenly so far, we can say, based on what we've seen. And I think this kind of highlights the lane. Like, you're not going to get level two on Alistair in like pretty much any amount of time. <laughs> Go again, I'm drunk in Mississippi. <laughs> oh, man. Viper and Delight don't even back off. Like, I'm drunk in Mississippi is definitely the first lyric of a bluegrass song, and I love bluegrass. It's like no, it's fine. It's limited opportunity to punish. I think is the takeaway that's been demonstrated here. Um, which, when you're picking a smolder, you're more than fine with that situation. That's exactly what you want, Viper. I believe he is still our fastest stacker to 225 on the smolder. I'm not sure, because we had a fast one the other day that might have been it, but he's definitely up there. He was below 20 minutes. He was like 1952. I think we had one yesterday that was like 1920, 30-ish. Really? I definitely remember there being a really fast one, maybe like 1940. I don't know. We'd have to yeah, do Dom was saying that Elk got it 19 minutes. Regardless of whether he was the fastest, uh, he's very fast. <laughs> yeah. True. Um, here's okay. All right. Nice charm. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! The plays? He kills owner? <laughs> what? Okay, so E. Uh, w E for owner. Mrs. Q. Faker flash charms. Yep. Zekka gets autoed. Owner is barely in turret range. Takes one auto. Gets flipped. He still has tower aggro. That is unlucko. Zekka has a potion going on him. He gets Q. What kills him, though? What's the last bit of damage there? Oh, it's literally the turret shots right there. Oh, God, he flashes. Oh, it's a train wreck. 
At least Faker got double buffs. It's crazy that, uh, honestly, Zekka almost lived there. It's really odd that owner i wouldn't anticipate here that he would have taken turret aggro right here because this is where he first gets turret aggro with the auto where he procs the e is or procs the red buff as well and he tries to come out but zeka still has w up and e up so he stuns him so he just maintains turret aggro this entire time and he tries to flash out the real mistake was walking forward instead of flashing out owner fucked this up right because he absolutely does not. So, remember, he can just leave, but he gets super greedy and he tries to get the last auto, but then he realizes he's going to die. Oh, he's going to get first blooded, as they will pick up the kill at least. The turret aggro range in the first place was kind of bullshit, I'll be honest. But he then misplays it once he knows he has turret aggro, and he gets greedy and tries to go for that extra auto instead of just flashing out of turret range. Just flash the W. Yep. I mean, he could have done that too. I don't know. He's in the slow comes in and the flash charm does. He thought he could get out. It's pretty greed. He thought he could get out of that too. And it's unfortunate, but I mean, like, what is he doing here? This is the most egregious one, I think. Oh, he's going to get first blooded. It's pretty badly played, though. Pick up the kill at least. Pretty badly played. Feels like deja vu. Chovy did the exact same thing as Zaka did there. Zaka will go to semis and worlds 2027. You are drunk, nobody. Knocking the Lee Sin into the tower. We saw this in our series earlier today. Just one of the dangers. Early ganking the Talia. If you get a bit too close to that tower, you're gonna take multiple hits with the stun combo through the rocks. So nice answer back from Zaka. And with the teleport back in, you don't really lose anything. Two flashes bid on T1 to 1 at Final Life Esports. You're pretty happy with that. Yeah, you definitely are. I mean, it does mean that, um, you know, Lee Sin and Ari still do have a lot of potential. Are you planning on live view on Worlds? I uh, probably won't do live views because I have to compete with co-streamers and that's kind of a waste of time. So probably just do more bangers only like I did for Last Worlds. I mean, viewership was very good for Last Worlds, better than it is right now. Not that I'm doing badly or anything. I've got like over a thousand live, you know, concurrence across uh, YouTube and Twitch right now. But I was up at like up to 2,000. Which is not a lot for many streamers, but for somebody who just does VOD reviews and doesn't even watch the games live, it's not too shabby. How mad do you think T1 will be when you rank T1 even lower in your power rankings? I mean, they're probably still third, guys. But, I don't know. I feel like they can't say shit after losing to Gen G and HLE. They should be grateful for third. Have you ever thought about joining a Dom co-stream? Uh, I don't think I'm a, Riot will allow me to be a guest on co-streams. Viper 30 stacks at 5. Gets a few nice ones there with the W trade. Riot has to approve all guests on co-streams, and I don't think they will approve me. Will eventually catch up to him. So good in the 2v2, but eventually with owner there, it's going to be too much. Yep, kind of seeing the payoff uh, of that first initial trade, being in the cooldowns of Delight. If he had everything available, if he had the headbutt, maybe he could have gotten out of that one, uh, but just able to pin him down. And a uh, kill for Azari. Potential of. Engages on Choidi Carry. He just headbutt Azari away. Uh, he doesn't have many cooldowns now. He is going yes, to as the Q. Not bad. All right. All right. I'd use Ghost there. So Guma does get a kill early. So good in the 2v2, but eventually with owner there, it's going to be too much. Yep. Can I see in the payoff uh, of that first initial So I'll trade three grubs for first Drake as a result of this. Six minutes in. Very slight early lead for T1. Very valuable for T1. It's going to be a nice early start. At least Viper is still alive and he can stay stacked. This is a good series. Ah, uh, it was pretty good. It's been pretty good. Can I stack? Yeah, cool. I'm good. Actually, yeah. The cow is I wasn't a big fan of the draft from HLE in game two, and I think game one owner played fucking terribly, but this this game has been pretty good so far, even though I think, again, the draft was kind of griefed by T1 here. 
There's no someone's there, but not that there's specifically delight. I think you may be dead. He's dead. Well, WQ. We did not have to use Maokai ult there. The lane, that was overkill. We did not have to use Maokai ult. Like, I mean, you have Maokai W, you have Delight with a pink ward. I mean, he literally pinks the brush. WQ. Peanuts in W range. He can't flash out of that. You can die to the turret. That's not a necessary okay, Maokai but, uh, ult. Whatever. Whatever. And, you know, this is honestly actually dangerous positioning for Viper. Like, he doesn't have vision control in the river. But Kerry is mid, so he's on an opportunity where he can kind of just walk up here, fortunately. But definitely could have been threatening if T1 were in position to capitalize. They're not, though, so this play goes pretty unpunished. No objective to fight for, so whatever. Yeah, but you could make another gank or counter gank later with the Maokai ult. Okay, we don't need to watch this again. I don't really need to watch this again either. He, he would have had to flash WQ. And so that's why the Maokai ult is redundant, because by the time the Q, anime, the Q knock up was over, uh, Maokai was in W range anyway. But he's playing Maokai, he's pretty unfazed. Although I think if he's lost his Krogs to a Zeri laser, I think that <laughs> would bother him. He would be pretty phased. Yeah. If that happened. He might even be rushing with his phases. Yeah. True. That is something he does. Remember Predator? Nope. Don't know what <laughs> about to drink some liquid IV. Good for you Still if you're drunk. That, that'll that make you feel better in the morning. I can't honestly remember the last time I've seen in solo queue or competitive, the Predator rune. They really just... Yeah, yeah Peanut playing like Garrett Saunders, I agree with you. Uh, Garrett, uh, the Peanut playing like a human is so fun to watch. I love Peanut, dude. Good Peanut games are so great. His pathing, his intelligence. Like, he... He is a great jungler, man. This is the way it goes. Very nice control work here. He's going to spot carry a... No pings on him. They must have seen him. They must have seen him. Surely. Surely. Kitty Doran doesn't just die to Double Doran's on Jace? No pings on him. You mean because his name is Doran and he has the Doran's blade? It's a Dirk. He has a he has a serrated Dirk. Now they've definitely seen him, and Kerry's also seen the control ward. And I think he was dead. Well, I mean he is going to Yeah, I know he's Um nice little dive. They see Kerry up immediately, they say, hey, let's just Sarian alone. Yeah, two point and click CCs. More than enough, uh, and it's actually a ghost from Guma, so... I guess it doesn't matter, because the next time Peanut makes a gank, he has Maokai ult up again. Guma usually thinks he can live through this for some reason, even though Nautilus is in top lane. At least he didn't waste flash, I guess. 63 stacks. Yeah, two point and click CCs, more than enough. Uh, and it's actually a ghost from Goomer, so... I mean, I, I don't think there's anything you can do, but it's not even like he can cleanse the Maokai route. He was just dead. Um, owner. Started oh, using Liquid IV after seeing my sponsor and some other recommendations. Very appreciate the fact your sponsor is something you can stand behind. Dude, we have turned down, like, lots of sponsorship money. Like, big deals, because we didn't like the sponsor. I will not, I will not take sponsors that I do not partake in myself, guys. Okay. I'm not going to recommend shit to you. Like, all the stuff that we have been sponsored by, I think are, you know, good products. I use AG1 every day. I use Liquid IV in my workout this morning. I wear, this is not an Into the AM shirt, but I have a bunch of the Into AM clothing now. I really enjoy it. Trolley. Freeze pipe. Dude, the freeze pipe vape was actually low-key amazing. I wish I had it in Korea and it wasn't super illegal. Freeze pipe's coming back, by the way. <laughs> They're back, baby. For our four, we're, doing a, we're doing a 420 campaign with them. Should be fun. Setting up for a good soul, most likely. Carrier 
really wants to be top lane, but I think something... Yeah, uh, uh, Trolley, I think, will come back, too. They were very happy with how things went. Trolley's great. We're talking to some other fun sponsors, too, you guys. Uh, Manscaped soon. Manscaped's the next one that's coming soon. I'm using ExpressVPN right now. I don't, I don't, we don't give you guys bullshit. Like, we give you good shit. Um, it will not be a 420 video this year for the cringe content because, uh, I'm in Korea, so I cannot legally do weed, but I am going back to the States in May, so we will do one in May after 420. Yes, small um, just basically clear the wave as fast as they can so they can be elsewhere on the map. Piper's like, no, <laughs> I'm in the right place, I, I'm clearing this wave, this is all I need to do, I need to get the max stacks on this one. Yeah, you need that Nasus mindset. You know. Yeah, or Vagar. You know, I've seen Faker do the same thing on Vagar, where he's like just sitting there tanking six minions because he only wants to kill them with his Q. Yeah. Obviously, gets a lot easier later when you can just Q a wave as the. Cookware sponsors? Yeah, that'd be banging. Oh yeah, I'll obviously like HelloFresh Factor we use. Especially in Smolder's case, it feels. Um. I would love to get some cookware sponsors. But I. Takes it takes time, guys, to make these deals, so just be patient. It's been, it's been a long way coming. Elephant is doing very well in sponsorship right now. Just keep, keep getting more and more. We're doing good. Uh, I think we're close now to a deal with, a, like, a male butcher. Not like male as in the gender, but uh, as in, like, the a, sta a company that will mail you steaks, which I'm, I'm psyched about. But I think Hot Life Esports probably still going to be able to get... Viper to two two five before Soul is on the cards, which is the main takeaway. Yeah, I'd say it's very likely. Um, it's a light. You deny Hexclad, yeah, I'd love to get Hexclad. Uh, Little Crusade, the dream. Viper will tell his mom. Moviel, dude, Moviel is actually my dream in terms of cookware. Or Ninja, ooh, yeah, dude, Ninja, Air Fryer, slash the Foodie, which is their. Uh, um, their electric pressure cooker that's also an air fryer. Um, they also make right. really good blenders and uh, food processors. You know that big ninja fan. That's like how every 80 carry sounds. So the big like, ninja fan. It's like the sound we just made. Oh, come on. Um, all right, Zeka, he's getting in there. We got a one on one. Fit. All right, nice. I mean, Zeka's, like Zeka's shown some pretty good. <laughs> yeah. like the sound we just some made. pretty good uh, chops here. On to, uh, on the Talia this like game, honestly, guys. He's not a champion that he's really known for. But he has the E down. He gets charmed, but he gets his W off, so there's the stun onto Faker. Walks up, Qs him in the face. Nice actual angle on the Q, so he comes back, knowing that he's gonna come this direction. Misses the next Q, but not too bad. Not too bad of a trade. Yeah, I mean... I actually think maybe Zeka can stay around and clear that wave up. Big green egg for outdoor, cool dude. Hit me up. Hit me up with a smoker up. sponsor. Uh, oh, obviously being by Faker, but gonna team get a Zeka. I think pretty worth. Traeger. Especially Let's fucking go. <laughs> you old, like, look, look, look at that old cooldown taken away, you know? Did you see how Zeka missed 99% of the charms in, in game one? Uh, yeah, his Ari is generally, like, pretty all right, though. See it moving. Sometimes when you have like Galio, it's like yeah, yeah. it's just it's state call. Is, is like, it broken? Uh, you have to like <laughs> tap, tap the screen a little bit. 160 seconds. <laughs> Isn't that, I think at rank one it's 180. Now. Ideal protein powder yeah. sponsorship also, like, Ascent. Like, like Galio Ascent is the god tier protein so powder long. and creatine transparent transparent so labs you, you creatine. Like 17 seconds. Uh, but obviously, but Ascent protein is the so fucking best, guys. I am telling you. Victory is there. <laughs> oh, the Weber smoker? Yeah, I've heard good things about the new uh, Weber pellet smokers. Okay, let's take a take a look at this one. Hanma, you know, playing this pretty slow. You can see T1 is getting the Drakes uh, stacking up early to put pressure on the smolder. Peanut does get CC'd a little bit here. Where is his ult? Oh, he actually just point blank ults right there. And we're just gonna... 
Caria flashes forward and misses Doran with his hook while getting hit by Peanut's ultimate. And Viper just going to stack a bunch. Oh my god, he's going to get so many stacks here, isn't he? Oh my lord. How did he live that long? That's so crazy. He's just wandering around. He gets charmed. And there's a knock up here that comes in Delight with a fucking hero play, by the way. Look at Delight, dude. Look at Delight. He wraps around. Look at him. He f he W flash Q. So he W's to owner. My God, that's actually mechanically beautiful. I think he, I, d I think he WQ flashes. Let's see if I can slow it down enough to see in the mess of particles. Okay, so he he punts, he actually punts Caria in. And can I see if he starts his animation? It's gonna be really hard to tell, guys. Because he flashes in. And gets the Q after that. Gets the three-man, four-man Q, actually. Which keeps Peanut alive. Peanut then autos. That's a passive from Maokai right there for 111 health. And then he somehow flashes over the wall and gets another W down. That's so crazy. Yeah, instant knockup. I think that is mechanically very challenging. Look at the... Delight makes the hero play here. Watch, though. W, Q, yeah, he does start the Q animation. I saw the start of it right there. Flash into four-man knockup. <laughs> so nasty, guys. Meanwhile, Viper's just free-hitting on them. Zekka's zoning Gumiyushi. Yeah, what a beautiful fight. That's so well played by Hanwa. So they Faker actually gets the herald. Let's see how he does that. Oh, he actually just autos from the side here. Yeah. Owner did pick it up too. Carry a flash hook though was not missing. The flash hook is pretty devastating. If we watch carry a. Guys, like, Doran just sidesteps it, and then he gets hit. He uses ult on Jace, but there's no follow-up, so Doran's able just to run out, and then he gets punted into the team, which enables the four-man Q flash from Delight. Viper did a lot of damage in that, though. Viper probably has a bazillion stacks from that fight. That's the danger, is, like, if you, if you fight Smolder... In that circumstance, and you lose the fight, or he free hits, holy shit, he can accelerate his stacking. Because he can get like 15, 20 stacks probably from a fight like that. He's not woken up. He suspects. Could Delight be here again for the 17th time? He is. Isn't there a keybind to change video speed? Yeah, but sometimes I, you have to go. Uh, there is. That's the keybind. Um, but sometimes it's just easier to go frame by frame because right, 0.25 is not slow enough. Tonight, that our top is respected. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a good oven or happy with an air fryer isn't worth yeah, it, false, 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 false. Air fryers are so useful so you don't have to heat up your fucking oven, dude. Even if you have a convection oven, being able to instantly heat up the air fryer and do batches of like chicken breasts or, you know, a side of broccoli in there is so much easier than heating up your whole fucking oven. And the, the amount of times you have to heat up your oven when you have an air fryer, you're, it goes down dramatically. So almost always, I would say... You know, if you're not baking or, like, roasting a large amount of stuff on sheet pans, air fryer is almost always more useful. And it's not like air fryers are expensive, guys. Pretty, pretty quickly and so the value you get is pretty crazy. Uh, he survives a crazy amount of time. 
Like, they, I, I know you think they do the same things, but the practical usage of them ends up being quite different. I mean, I use air fryers all the time. I think they just kept like four kills there. Um, so a little unfortunate. The light should have told Viper I'm about to knock up four people. Save yeah. Oh, maybe. <laughs> you gotta see it. You have to have that chemistry between the bot lane, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You just gotta know. Just gotta know. Just trust in the lights, Alistair. Um, but yeah, still. I mean, even though T1 got the herald, it's still a gold lead for Hunter Life Esports. Only good for singles or couple. I have two kids. Dude, I use my air fryer all the time. I fucking make dino nugs in it. Do you know how much less of a pain in the ass that is? To air fry the fucking dino nugs? Then put them in the oven for kids? To air fry a, a side of broccoli to the... To, like, I can make enough broccoli in a big air fryer for four people. You guys, you guys have not been converted. You don't understand. You don't understand the glory of air fryers. There is not an argument you're going to make. It's like you're a dumbass for not owning an air fryer and using it properly. And just like you're a dumbass for not owning an instant pot and an electric uh, pressure cooker and using it properly. These things cost like $80 and the amount of value they give you for $80 is bonkers. It's like when you subscribe for $5 on DeMonte's stream. The, the amount of content that I put out, the value is crazy. I'm just the air fryer of content. You either know and appreciate it, or you're just a vicious pleb. I feel like it feels strong. Don't get me wrong, but I still think it's playable, especially when you have a smolder. Yeah. So I I think precarious, but not completely doomed. And it looks like they're setting up a fight, but see if they fully opt into it. See, 808 Ben gets it. He gets it. Already coming down here from Doran and Viper. Air fried Brussels sprouts are so good. Correct. <laughs> Who would you say is MVP so far in HLE? Peanut. The nut. See if they fully opt into it. See some poke already coming down here from Peanut had a boss game one. And he's doing really well this game too. Be careful not to stay. This game also, not this game two, because this is game three. I meant T O O. You know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. Right behind the Drake, or it will bounce onto you. And the <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Sergerius, for your Twitch Prime sub. Okay, Alt here going to kind of corral them as here comes. Yeah, also, want to heat up some pizza? Fucking air fryer, the goat of reheating pizza. You gotta be careful not to stay right behind the Drake. Or it will bounce onto you. And the Malkai Alt here going to kind of corral them as here comes Moom to help out as well. Here comes Moom. <laughs> you gotta be careful. I don't think Valda's stay meant to say that. Right behind the Drake, or it will bounce onto you. And the Malkai Alt here going to kind of corral them as here comes Moom to help out. <laughs> as well. Carry is getting so low, and the steal comes in from owner. But now with carry it down, it looks like Hamalay like Esports do. All right, so they get it, but they possible. they still have to be very scared of Smolder time. I think they've been using that for fun. Oh, because it says like Moom in the. It's like the text says Moom. This is supposed to be like Mom. I get it. It's funny. It's an Atlas thing. Okay. NPC. Thank you. Your Twitch Prime sub. T1 get the dragon, but I think Hunter Life Esports approach it well. Are air fryers big enough for pizza? If you get a big enough one. Still definitely an advantage to T1, and they are approaching Seoul. But the thing is as well is like, you know, you think about getting a lot of stacks from farming, but Viper ends up getting a lot of Did YouTube kill the foreplay episode of Heat? Doing the dragon to bounce on people. No. I want to actually have a stack check when we can. Did it? Faker is waiting. Won't be rewarded for his patience. He's at like 180. I have to check now. What the Viper. fuck? Really? He's quite close. Okay, 170. You trolling me? Yeah, I kind of felt like the pace would pick up a little bit with how high he is. Yeah, I really like the use of the Tilea wall to crawl them in and then the. No, it's still there. Afterwards. Uh, and they kind of just focus a lot down on a carrier, but lose track of the dragon a little bit. Peanut does. And then the hyper mobility of the carrier. Of T1 just means you ain't catching anyone. Yeah. Do air fryers still heat up instantly? Yes, they do. That's why they're better than your oven. Pick up all the members and kill them. It's not instantly instantly. It takes like a minute. In their favor. One kill. Not as good as one infernal drink. 
Yeah. And one step closer to the Infernal Soul. A steady climb for Humble Life Esports, but it's a very, very slowly steady climb. Slow, steady climb, you could say. Do air fryers use less energy? Yes, because they're small and they use electricity. But, uh... You, you are actually trolling if you don't use an instant pot and an air fryer for cooking in the year of our Lord 2024, guys. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Those are like life changing kitchen inventions. Yeah, rice cooker as well. Getting a good rice cooker. You are, you're like running it down in the kitchen if you don't know how to use that. And the reason you think air fryers suck is because you just don't, you, you haven't discovered how to use it properly yet. It's Still it's don't. a you problem. Mom couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, on that one. <laughs> my father was killed by an air fryer, of my mother an instant pot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Tragic. It's tragic when uh you have Oh, nice charm there. Faker Faker now doing the Trovi charms off the wall. Get Seka. He has done it well as now it comes in and they just don't really want to take part of this. Okay, good now, Kyle. It's going to keep them around. This very awkward for oh, they actually hit them on the other side of that. That's huge. That's huge. It's huge that they. That, how did he get that? Like they're trying to body block here. Oh, okay. So he does get the body block. He does get the body block, but Peanut actually makes the hero play anyway. So Karia buffers it with the Q to get over the wall. That's very nice. Did Faker get hit by that? I couldn't tell if Faker got hit by that. No, I don't think he did. But he does get hit by Shock Blast, and then that prompts the Flash W. Very nice. Beautifully played. Might look at this Baron. Yeah, I mean, it's just spawned. You have an Alistair. If you get control of the area, you can easily deny Owner from getting into the pit. Now, you have wards set up. <laughs> have to be careful for Doran to not lose his life. What makes him stop then? I think he's trying to stay behind. I think he's trying to stay behind the Nautilus so he doesn't get stunned. He's trying to. He has to. He's stopping because he's staying in a place where he's not going to get uh, hit by Maokaiol. You can tell because he doesn't have a white bar over his head. He, he doesn't have the CC indicator. And now Karia just trying to front line, just trying to make some space for the rest of his team, but Zeus TPing in as well. He's on the run. He's not going to do anything by himself. And how many Force might look at this Baron? You have to realize what Monty calls an air fryer is him just yelling about LCS strats into a heat sealed box. He cooks Dino nuts in 45 seconds. Hey, I'm not that full of hot air. Just a little bit, not that full. Not enough to cook Dino Nugs in 45 seconds. That's too much hot air. Not sure, actually. Now Zeri's getting an angle. The kill lands on a peanut. Owner, he threads the needle, and he's going to take him down. As now, oh! Oh my god. Not sure, actually. All right, let's, let's, let's roll it back a little bit. So we win this fight in topside. We're trying to transition directly into a Baron. Little bit janky because Peanut's pretty low and they don't have a true tank here unless Alistair is ulting. Especially when Peanut is low, like I said. They can do it pretty quick though. It's it's pretty bold with a smolder comp to just not hold that W, right? Like this is a situation where with a smolder comp you're probably just like, eh, we're winning so hard and this is before we get all the stacks. Do we really want to take this risk? Yeah, I, I, I do think it's wise of them to back off here, guys. This is not worth it. You don't want to, like, give the game up to a Zeri moment. Okay, Q comes in. Owner. Gets Q2 down. Nice W, though. So Zeka walks up here. That's actually a beautiful shove. That's a beautiful shove. Guma could have flashed that, though. Guma didn't respect it, and he dies. He could have flashed that. Yeah, 
It's blocked in certain EU regions. Yeah, it, it's blocked in only a couple uh, European countries and like a bunch of countries in Africa, I guess. The heat vod that is, but it's available like almost everywhere. I think it was. It said it was only like blocked in one percent of our audiences countries so we just decided to roll with it rather than re-edit it again Tense play. Uh, Doran nearly gets popped here. Has to two flashes bit immediately trying to deal with this. But it's really Zeka. This is the right call though. For me, landing this critical knockback onto Guma. I mean, Guma should have flashed this. Him, obviously with the I mean, Zeka, right? Zuma, Guma had flashed up. He didn't flash it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They both start with Zeka. Yeah. Zeka. Oh, Faker. Oh, the charm gonna miss. Pina with the dodge south. You don't I love see how that he every missed year. it and still did half his health. Yeah. Not much I mean, magic resist. He did malignant him very hard. Oh. You don't have to aim that. Five stacks. Five stacks to go for Viper. Oh, I'm surprised he doesn't have it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 220 is not 225. Maybe an ult could get them. Uh, they're just going to give it up, though. Looks like. We got a wall coming in as well. Owner. I mean, they're throwing everything at him just to make sure. Okay. Don't have to aim that. Five stacks. Five stacks to go for Viper. Oh, I'm surprised he doesn't have it. Yeah. I'm actually surprised he doesn't have it yet, too, given yeah, all the fighting that's been going on. Maybe an ult could get them. Uh, they're just going to give it up, though. Looks like. We got a wall coming in as well. Owner. I mean, they're throwing everything at him just to make sure. Okay, I think you will definitely have it in time for the next dragon fight. Um, yeah. I think I can say Probably. Make statement. We don't want to jump to conclusions. Yeah, All right, the next minion wave, you should have it. But I can't stand behind. So W N K yeah, so is two twenty two. He'll get off this minion so wave. Close, but I think two twenty seven. There it is. Cleared out the minion wave using his Q. I mean, so now he's up to stacks. They used a lot to try to the desperation that. here. But now we got a smolder on two twenty five. Malkai ult is down though. Very dangerous actually. I think two one are gonna pull off of it. They go for the turn. You see, the health is beginning to burn. Yeah, I mean, I, it was definitely T1 trying to start it, trying to bait a fight. Um, but good disengage coming out from Hanwai Esports. Oh, the light? Oh, he wanted that. Definitely did. It is Zeri, but... And you can definitely feel T1 know the time has been put on. Oh, no. oh. Uh, he's just dead. Okay, well, Charm comes in, and now the Wombo coming oh in. Oh, my God. Back. Why are we trying to defend this turret, by the way? What is Owner doing? Why? Owner is fucking inting. Holy shit. Look at this. He literally just walks onto the W. Dashes over. Why are we defending this turret? Why are we defending this turret at 23 minutes into this game? He literally... Oh my fucking god. Are you shitting me, Owner? You know he has Q upgrade. He literally dies for cannon minion, guys. He dies for cannon minion. He Q2s onto a cannon minion, gets WQ'd, and then exploded by Smolder. Guys. Uh, he's just dead, okay? Well, Charm comes in, and now the war And now there's the second instance of Talia W being up. I can't believe he just dies for cannon minion. This is so dumb. And you can definitely feel T1 know the why, why are we defending this turret? He actually just ints first game and he ints this game. There's the second WE from Talia. Nice job by Zekka. Now they just all die to Smolder Qs. And now they just lose Baron. They they literally traded Cannon Minion for Baron. That's that's the trade that T1 just made. <laughs> Dom was bricked up watching this. Was he mad at Owner for that? They traded... They fucking traded Cannon Minion for Baron. They are looking for this Baron. It's going down quickly, but TP's coming in. Well, you don't have a smite, so very doubtful that they do take it away. But let's see if they can get any cleanup. He doesn't have his yet. Oh, God. 
Wow, Pina didn't have smite. That's why they're they're being so deliberate about the zoning here. That's actually very good by Peanut. Scolded by mom a little bit, but that's about it. They managed to get out a little bit close to the wire, a little bit dangerous, but they pull it off. 3,000 gold lead, Baron and Paul. That, um, coming out, and then the re It's pretty confusing. Please really tell me Ox flames the owner for. Yeah, um, being a lot of teams really heavily dependent in, in this game. No. But the combo coming out, and then the re engage. He won't fight this. Oh. It's a double knock up. Both Nobody. Nobody gonna flame owner for Dude, killing out, a cannon right. minion with Q2. And then losing Baron time for it. Time those um, <laughs> Nobody? Very confusing. Yeah. Bueller? Bueller? Dorian, actually, on top of the damage meter, he is Jace, after all. Not too surprising. Uh, this is a lot of members of Hunter Life Esports in the bot lane. They do have Zekka covering mid. Uh, normally, we often see teams will, like, have one, one person, maybe two push bot, and then, like, push mid and rotate over. They're just beelining four straight bot, uh, which means there's like a lot of vision not secured in the jungle here. Yeah. They're trying to kind of cheat it and push it in here, but like Faker, Owner, and Carrier are really threatening on this flank. Yeah, just kind of brute forcing it, saying, okay, we have Baron, we're just going to get value out of it, whether you like it or not. And you know what? Even if they defend the tower, Viper will just keep spamming abilities that you can get in stacks. Uh, yep. 267 right now. Oh, and he has 268 AD. Not in sync. Well, He's one, one more stack. One stack away. And the poke is pretty annoying to deal with. I mean, carry on the Nautilus. He is a support Nautilus, and he's not farming. So he's not that tanky. I mean, he went Locket. Doesn't have that much armor. As now, Faker, he's going to get the ult out of Delight in trade of his own. But that's about it. Still chipping away here yeah, on not, this siege. Not a great trade. Oh, the hook. Oh, what? Great of his own, but that's about it. Yeah, still chipping away here yeah, on not, this siege. Not a great trade. <laughs> he tries to. I mean, it's desperation, right? They know they've lost, so he tries to get Viper. <laughs> but but oh, delight, oh. delight, <laughs> just why? <laughs> great of his own, but that's about it. Like, he tries to get Viper, but Viper just uses E to dodge it, and he ends up hooking Delight, and he's like, oh, shit, I made a terrible mistake. It's like, flashes immediately before Delight can actually just Q him, and then W him back into Hanwha. Oh, instant regret. Yeah. Instant regret. And you know what? He was definitely fishing He tried to He tried to make the hero play, guys. Like, I don't blame him for that. Somebody has to try and win this game. Zeus is now trying to win this game. And soaking up a lot of it. Sigma, I mean, he doesn't get to play the game. Yeah. Esports. Oh, here we go. Oh, Lord. He got them over the wall, too. Oh, God. And they all just burst to smithereens. It's now how will I be esports? 5v3. Maybe they can end this game. Peanut kind of being harassed here on the left side. They don't have a wave. They have 10 seconds on the Baron buff. Yeah, who needs mid or mid prior? They haven't even taken the tier 2, and they're just pushing down bot lane, and it's actually just working. The Siege is powerful. They don't really have a response to the Smolder right now. Zeus, he's trying to cut off the wave. Pretty desperate. Charm isn't going to land, and you know what? It's going to get Hummelite Esports out of the base. But now Zeus is on the run, and the TP is coming in. <laughs> he's going to stop the Charm. Will... <laughs> Now, this is pretty silly at the end, coming. guys. Doran's literally like TPing back, and they just like leave Peanut in here to get charmed. Peanut actually W's to a minion, I think, because he wanted to auto f to trigger his passive. So he W's to a minion so he can auto it so he gets the heal and then flashes. It's actually kind of clever by Peanut. Shenanigans here. So these are two of our top teams capable of really high level play. <laughs> that little passage there was a big. Runs away. Where is Guma's Q going? I mean, Guma, Guma can't play. Sorry, guys. Alright, this is kind of a troll TP by by Doran, though. I mean, they literally just. He basically, because Doran is troll TPing, he forces Peanut to body block the charm. 
and nearly die, right? Stop the charm. And then Guma's queuing backwards. We'll peed on and he gets away. <laughs> this guy's a fiesta, guys. Here. Well, these are two of our top teams capable of really high level play. <laughs> that little passage there was. Guma actually can't, um, like, pat his head and rub his tummy at the same uh, time. He can't press the Q game. button, you know, as he's, like, trying to move backwards at the same time. He can't, like, press the Q button where, you know, when he's moving. He, he has to, like, press Q at the same time he clicks his other hand. He can only hit Q at the same time he clicks, so whatever direction he's clicking is where the Q is going to go. Well, Charm is going to miss, and they get the Infernal Drake. Some low health fires, though, and Viper just... How do I be sports? Oh, man. Have they overstayed? Carrie's had some, honestly, well, some halfway decent hooks onto this Smolder. He almost got that other one, and Viper's just dodging him with E every time, so he hooks into the wall instead. That's so tragic. And he just, he just rage ults Peanut afterwards. Viper just ease forward. He's enormous. He's so huge. Oh boy, does he? Zeus is gonna get away. And at the end of the day, it looks like maybe Faker and Carrier also go down, but they're gonna spend a lot of time chasing. The hardest thing about playing Smolder is resisting the urge to flash Q when someone's slow. But uh, Viper not gonna waste his flash in this situation. But definitely just showing the advantage that Hanwha. Oh, he got charmed on his W. <laughs> Faker was hoarding all of the cinders. <laughs> That's what happened. Faker was so just Faker. crammed full of cinders. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know, we talk about them. They're fun to watch. Shout out to Doran's troll TP here. Pick like Smolder is huge because he obviously does value that Billy Hayeswell on Manseca. What a game! Give the guy his POG. Yeah. I kind of feel bad for Delight, because Delight's also had a phenomenal game. That's true. But Zekka's just been smashing it so far. Even Viper's had a great game, too. He's just smolder. We don't so. go for smolder, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky, I guess. Uh, yeah, unfortunate. And Kuma ease yeah, over the wall, ults, and, and then just it, gets you know? flash cued. And then W'd back into the team. <laughs> Kuma's like, uh, yeah, I'm here, guys, and I'm helping. Yeah, flash Q. Auto, W, Hammer Smash, Smolder Q. Very nice. Very nice. Zeri was helping, guys. It was a different kind of Zeri moment. Baron and 40. Baron and 40, 6,000 gold lead. Two Infernal Dragons in pocket as well. And the person with the most gold in the game is the Smolder. Yeah, he's got an arm guard too, so he's spending it correctly. I think at this point you're doing enough damage. Your your whole comp has so much damage, especially with Zekka also fed as owner. I, I think, well, he is Lee Sin, so he'll get away, but yeah. Sorry, we're it's back for Baron number two. In the middle of the game, but yeah. Kaz has been having a, a great one so far. It's uh, working. He keeps it up. Yeah, maybe that's the, the secret. Have you got any eye drops? I do, actually. Oh, man. <laughs> If you want some during the cast, uh, they're just gonna try to burst down the dragon, the Baron rather, and it might work out. I mean, it's not that fast though. And now, just setting up for this one, carry on the outside again. He's not that tank. He's just gonna burn the Smithereens oh, again, and now Viper has <laughs> Viper has arm guard. All the damage. He's just gonna burn the Smithereens oh, again, and now he dodges charm and REQ oh, with arm guard, and he zones them out. Peanuts just pe the three, peel master. And how many esports? They have a TP into the base as Zeka will take. Yeah, just it, just all just have Zeka go in. Back. Nice call. This yeah, is a very good call by Zeka. This is TP as well, so you can just Ooh. back now. Oh, but Faker. he can't go to the Nexus turret. Good luck, Faker. Um, yeah, <laughs> Faker's dead, and now we got a second TP in. This yeah, one is over. over. Jace will put an end to this one, and how many life esports? Wow. All right. Pretty, pretty bad series from T1, but I think those are impressive games by Hanwha, too. I really like their drafts in game one and three. Could have played Jinx, T1. Having that insurance of the double and M, we've seen upsets before, but it has come to that first round and gives you a safety net. And I think, honestly, if Hanwha like Esports had come in and they'd just gotten that initial game, and that'd be it, I still would have been like... Breon versus Nongshim and LCK. I think we can safely... Uh, guys, I think we can safely maybe... Um, uh, and I feel like there was good 
things to say about everyone, but in particular, Zeka, who we Watch an LEC game real quick. All right, which I'm going to put a poll up and on Twitch, and you can select which LEC game you want. We'll do one today. Those are obviously the flashy moments, but even the walls are pretty good. The the damage he was outputting in the team fights also very The Fly vs. TL series had the most kills in NALCS history by over 50 kills. It was also shit. I saw most of it already, and I'll watch the rest of it. All right. Which game next? Your choices are SKBDS, GX versus Fnatic, G2 versus Heretics, MDK versus Vitality. Or the very popular one, Carmine versus Rogue. Okay, there you go. Pick which game we do. Time's running out. <laughs> BLG versus Weibo. We I get back to that, get a different game. A different day, I mean. Well, the raccoons win. Carmine Corp versus Rogue. This is the world we live in. <laughs> Not by a small amount either. All right, guys, here we go. <sighs> okay, raccoons. I hope you enjoy. Why do you do this to me? Why do you make me have a trash feast? Perform so poorly, the championship points are very, very low. Yeah. And when you think about the Please focus on how Yamato is clear of the problem. I mean, obviously. So when you think about someone All these like jumping dumbasses told me he was the problem. All right, so no smolder, thank Jesus. You know, r shout out to Riot who did us all a solid by banning Azir, so Saken couldn't. I wouldn't have to watch Saken play it anymore, where he just doesn't understand how to play Sand Soldiers and choke points. All right, Senna up. Ari Senna, very powerful early game or early draft here. Okay, Nico and Rel, uh, flex potential, obviously for both of these champions. Either of these could be support. Rel could be jungle. So I like this so far. Makes it difficult to get your next round of bans because you don't know where things are going. Even though Saken is probably the Nico. I don't know if I want to see Targamas as Nico, frankly. They're going to ban support and jungle here, and we are going to play Viego. So Marcoon is going to have a chance to absolutely pop off. Viego has been historically one of his better picks. 
Bo on Jin Zhao. What? We're just gonna blind Urgot? What? Guys, this isn't real, right? No. Okay, so that's pretty good build in, into the Urgot. If you just go at early wardens now, it really negates much of what he can do. <laughs> Rogue is so bad. Wow, I didn't realize you hated Urgot that much. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm, like, I'm just saying, the item kind of counts. <laughs> Medic, my reaction exactly. We just, we just blind Urgot now? Like, I get if this is Heretics last year and this is Evie playing, that you would blind the Urgot, but then you just get malfighted. I'm just putting it out into the ether. I mean, I... It still cap Warden's Mail. Urgot will do no damage to the Malfoy. I am aligned with that. I don't see how the Urgot fits in. What is the Urgot supposed to do? Like, I just don't understand what the win condition with Urgot is. Are we actually thinking we're going to split push here? But why would we be splitting when we have kind of this, like, massive AoE-CC combo of, like, Callista, Ult, Rel, and Nico? How's this motherfucker going to teamfight? So I'm going to leave it open. I'm not going to make any early judgments because I don't want to shoot myself in the foot. In the, I, there might be technology here that I don't understand that is beyond, you know, like, I, maybe I haven't played his game. You know what I mean? Sure. By the way, Steak is on stage being like, I approve of this draft. This guy is a fucking legend. Why Why is Steak cool with Blind Urgot? Steak, come on, you're better than this. Good night, Naja fan. What a whack ass, what a whack ass decision. Ready to be surprised by what this Urgot can do on the side of KC. Cabashot has brought it out on the LEC stage in the past. Oh, he certainly has. Uh, LEC Summer 2020 was the last time he played it against XL. <laughs> he has cooked up whether it will be to the chef's delight or whether it will be. Demoted to the trash. <laughs> I got a leak from voice comms. Steak said, let's pick him whatever and lose in peace. <laughs> He's actually just Dardock raging now. Steak. 14 4, he had a bug fix. 13 yeah. 7, he had a bug fix. So the bug fix was um, Purge, which is your W, wasn't properly applying Hullbreaker. Uh, so you. Uh, I think it's GB that's been selling me on Hullbreaker Urgot for a week. Hullbreaker Shivana is what he loves. But he he hates it because it doesn't work the way he wants it to work. <laughs> he did get Masters recently on his Shivada top early account, so credit to GB for that. Doran's ring start for Finn, yeah. gone Comet. As far as I can tell, the last patch change where he was like buff slash nerfed, looks like he was nerfed, was back in 1210. <laughs> I think that might be a buff. A base health up, health growth up. Do we go over T1 already? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I was looking uh, but it, you can head over to my YouTube channel. So, yeah. I, and it will be there. If you want to watch the T1 matchup, all you it's the live stream that's going on on my main YouTube channel right now. All you have to do is rewind because they have that feature. There are people that are watching that have no idea what you're talking about. Look it up, Gen Z. They don't know. They don't know that Urgot used to swap you. <laughs> they're gonna be like, what? It so like, good. It's true. He used to fire crab claws from his little turret thing, yep. and he used Just to swap places you. with you. Yeah, yep. he would swap places with you. In the whole uh, I played support Urgot for a while, and my whole goal was flash, ult the enemy AD carry, <laughs> flip him into my team. I die immediately. He was like a terrible time. singe. Yeah. That's the way to think about it. Anyway, early jungle pathing. Let's have a look. We can see that Markun starting on the bot side, pathing up towards top. Oh, flash in from Targo as he hits six. Comp has to cleanse flash away. Both summon. Think about him. Anyway, early jungle pathing. Let's have a look. We can see that Markun starting on the bot side, pathing up towards top. Oh, flash in from Targo as he hits six. Comp has to cleanse flash away. Both summoners burnt. On that's the road, that's lane. a good trade. Yeah, especially with Bo coming exactly in. Exactly that. We know that Bo is a high progressive jungler. I think he's been a core part of their success so far this split. Uh, Rogue playing really far up for a bot lane that was about to hit two right there. This is kind of trolling by. They know Bo is here because they catch him on the ward. So Viego basically instantly starts to try and three quadrant jungle him. 
after taking Raptors. They do have the Faker Ward in. So there is a Faker Ward right here, so they actually see him. But it expires, so they actually... That's really bad timing, guys. This ward here expires right before he moves down here, so they know he's at Raptors, but they don't necessarily know that he is trying to move into Blue Quadrant, Bo's Blue Quadrant. You can probably intuit it, especially now that you see the dive coming in. Remember that the Nautilus is the one who wants to farm here, so killing him does actually have a big effect, but it is very difficult to dive a level 2 Nautilus, and now we just use flash two flashes to do that. Uh-huh. Okay. Interesting. This is a third wave crash, guys. Flashes out of the W. Gets the hook onto upset, and so we used two flashes to accomplish nothing, and we lost our entire jungle. Alright, so now we just have a after they saw Bo on the ward in Tribush. So Bo's gonna walk back into his jungle and be down a blue button. And they accomplished nothing because Nautilus got to farm under the turret, and so they didn't even lose any CS. And actually Rogue is higher level now because it required Carmine Corp to recall. So what a fucking terrible play. It's like they're intentionally losing. We also have Cull Urgot, so he's just, he, he literally recalls and buys Cull, so he's stacking, boys. He's stacking. I mean, I don't mind Urgot in certain games, but I just don't understand what his purpose here is. Like, the, the, like, what? What is he supposed to do? Especially when you're blind to go. I already watched T1 versus HLE, yeah. You can check out the VOD. You, 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 you didn't miss it, guys. It's literally on the YouTube channel that I'm still currently streaming on. All you have to do is go to the live stream and just rewind it. It's not hard. It's not gone forever. It's there for you to watch right now. And yet they somehow get first blood. Alright, well, they do get the farming Nautilus. They do get a, a CS lead eventually here. Alright, now they can take Drake. Alright, things are a lot better now. What's up, banger as fuck Milky Way series? Uh, the series versus JDG and Weibo are pretty entertaining. Is Cast talking about vitality? What, what are you talking about? I wasn't listening. No. Casey Vitali. Ah, well, it happens. It happens. Problem. I mean, the problem is, though, for the rogue bot lane, like, 
Falcon's on the other side of the map. You've just All right, we're back for Zoe Lee's dive round one million. Nico is making his way over as well. Saken leveraging some of the push that he has to offer threat. And now the Urgot is saying, you want to dive me? Thoughts, guys? Because that would be the traditional cross map, but the wave's not in a good enough position to really threaten that dive. Cabo should feel very safe here. Still has the flash up. Fleet footwork going to keep him nice and healthy. And uh, overall, Casey's sitting in a pretty comfortable spot right now. Even with the lead that Markun does have, and it's a pretty sizable one in the jungle, you can see a huge camp advantage, 400 gold lead. That Callista is getting very strong, very fast. First base, boots, Berserker's Greaves into the recurve bow. That's just a, that's a great back. <laughs> really uh, Callista obviously really wanting that upgraded boots early. Increases your martial poise. Ability just to dash around the fights as much as possible. Sometimes we do see priority on the serrated dirt. Mm -hmm. um, when we had treats on the broadcast last split, he was talking a lot to us about how it can just be really powerful. All right, this is super boring. Your Q, get some value out of it, um, but upset instead. Uh. Uh. Positioning towards this mid lane. <laughs> Too high for micro. Thank you for your subscription. There's a JDG versus Milky Way bangers only. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did all those series. I've done a lot of the the most, almost all of the recent Milky Way games are I've done bad reviews of. We're gonna have Milky Way Day. Get, uh, probably sometime, probably Wednesday or Thursday of this next week. Thank you, Medic. That's very kind of you to subscribe to me. I appreciate your casting. You're a very good caster. Disadvantage at the moment, or at least don't have the extra back. I mean, so this is a really great example. Um, yeah, I, I think we're gonna do Milky Way Day later this next week, guys, where I uh, I review, I, I probably, I mean, I've seen all those games, but I'm gonna take a look at them again and try and uh, create a more edited video about why Milky Way is so good right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that research on stream, and we'll we'll pull a bunch of highlights together, and then I'll just at the very end of the stream I will make the video basically on stream and then I'll have an editor fuck with it. But you you guys will see how the, the video sausage is made as it were. But I think it's it'll be a good exercise to because nobody's actually made any kind of um, deep an analysis content on Milky Way yet. Not in English at least. Which is kind of a shame because I think people are wondering like you know seeing a bunch of different examples lined up about ways in which Milky Way is good. So I think that could be fun content. So I'll do that on stream. Meanwhile, we're just going to watch this Nautilus get dove a million times. Not bad. I mean, the first dive was kind of bad, but the rest of the dives have been pretty good. Larson hits the charm onto Targamas, who has Callista ult on him, so no big deal. Life on Rumble goes crazy. Yeah, that, that series was definitely a life MVP series. The one versus JDG, life plays super well. Your most mornings. <laughs> oh, it's it's nice of you. I hope you enjoy my reviews of some of these games, medic. It's fun to go back and watch them. The more analytical bent, where you can get a lot of replaying in. Slow it down and do some analysis. It's less about that and more about the fact that this Callista is accelerating. She is already in a very powerful spot. Wouldn't be surprised if they even consider swapping her up towards the top side. Maybe they want to try and unlock those grubs or towers. Maybe they just want to keep this 2v2 going for as long as possible. So Elix has been left isolated on the bot side of the map. Here comes Finn with the ult. Capuchon has the flash. Uses the same to flip over Finn, but Comp takes the kill. No flash burnt there by Cabochard, holding on to it, knowing that he was pretty much doomed. So at least clears out the wave with the Riptide hook. Up there, just dodged to the side of it. Grubs up, though, and it's always the easiest thing to do when you are behind in that AD carry roll. Here's what I will say. Even with the early game going like this for KC, I think Malphite might just make Callista irrelevant. Yeah. Now, not the player, yeah. as in, like, the actual function in this game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Malphite is just such a good pick into Callista. <laughs> like, his E just makes Callista players really sad. <laughs> uh, yeah, Callista also very, 
low range, so it's not that hard for Malphite to get on top of Callista either. They're doing a good, really good job of keeping this Nautilus from getting super tanky, though. And controlling Drake on the side of the map. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right as I, I cast... I went back in time and caster cursed them, guys. I caster cursed them from the future. Larson already on the roam. Warden's Mail is done for Zoelise now. So he actually does get the Senna ult from across the map, which is a really big part of this. So Targamas takes aggro. Takes aggro with Q on the stun. So then he gets rooted in turn, hit by Senna ult. Has to jump out. But Larson blast cones over, so he's already there. Upset, then takes turret aggro, guys. So, right there. That's the Nautilus ult. Upset flashes out, so he's not in range to trigger rend anymore. So those spears are useless. He comes back in, does get the rend eventually, but Larson's already there. Oh my god, it's a train wreck. Zoli saving ult for second target. Yeah, he didn't. He really held it a long time, and he got the double value by the knock up on bow as well. He's very patient. He knew Larson was coming, so that's why he saved his ult. I bet. Was he was he knew he was dead, but he thought if he could stall long enough, it was really just about stalling as long as possible to get Larson there, and it worked out because he gets a triple. Meanwhile, they were slow building this wave in the top side. And they, they had sent the Senna up, but Senna is broken, and so has cross-map ability to participate in fights. And so Comp just gets a million assists for the, that entire sequence. Really great play here from Larson. Keep your eyes on the minimap because the dive doesn't really matter. Zoelis plays this about as well as he can. Blast Cone MVP, by the way. Also offering a lot Saving of time. Saving the depth charge as well. Really good there from Zoelis. Really good stuff. And then it's just the arrival of Larson. He gets the reset on his ultimates. Has enough to secure a triple kill. And while all this is happening, there's a top dive. Freddy, so much enthusiasm on his face. Incredibly proud of his team there. But very well played. Now, look at Rogue. 3k gold lead. And it comes back to the fact that Marcoon is now a full level above his jungle counterpart. He's just been perma-farming. This Diego is incredibly strong. Now, when we get back into the game, we'll highlight just how strong he is. Look at those itemizations. The, the Kraken Slayer already completed. A thousand gold lead in the mid lane as well. Malignant's finished for Larson. 12 minutes in. That's a pretty good timing to have that done. And the game just gets harder for Carmichael. You had this lead in the AD carry role, and you, you still have it. You know, you have 800 gold advantage there, but Zoelise is ahead, as expected, with him having farmed. Mid lane is now almost 1,000 gold ahead for Rogue. So what is this Urgot going to do, guys? The O2 Urgot. I'm very curious. That he does. Next item, Frozen Heart. You know who dislikes Frozen Heart? Urgot and Callista. <laughs> they do not have a fun time into this mouth fight, and I feel the, uh, the surprise factor of this Urgot is uh, more of a shock, perhaps, for Carmine Core fans, because it hasn't been as effective as well, Casey would have wanted. I still have a bit of a shock around the Urgot blind. Yeah. Uh, that is something that I, I still don't really fully understand. Uh, I don't get it. You can get some insight from Casey afterwards, because, like, the Malphite, this Malphite, yeah. you know, if you pick Kraken, uh, in any case, this is the situation that Casey now finds themselves in. The good news is that Callisto is still in a pretty powerful position. The bad news is that Larson's Ari is in an even stronger position, and uh, I think Rogue are going to be happy to fight whenever well, so they want. Yeah, but he's a farming not, so he's super strong. All right. Okay. So they actually get onto Larson. Larson has to flash and then use one of his charges to get out. They execute him. Okay, Finn's still here. Finn has ult. They really want to go after this? No. Get out. Please leave. Push mid. <laughs> I can't believe Yamato would blind Urgot like this. Fuck Yamato, dude. 
trying to push in that way. Remember, six grubs will help grow. I can't believe he mind controlled them into playing this badly and going one and three in LEC. Helicoptering to extend the duration. He gets the movement speed from the clone. Oh, good from Saken. A bit of a misstep, perhaps, from Marcoon flashing when those tangle barbs were still available. I wonder if he tried to flash over it. But, uh, yeah, so part of the reason why Rogue is 0 3 is because it played. <laughs> they split around the hook. That was such a surprise. He hooks into the brush, doesn't actually hit somebody, and he's like, oh shit, there's a lot of people in that brush. That was pretty sloppy. That was pretty sloppy, just like blind hooking into the brush when your top laner isn't there and Urgot is literally right here. Like, the setup on this for Rogue is fucking terrible. Silly. Guys, please don't tell me this game is like, oh my god, this game is so long. You guys, why do you do this to me? Is this game like 50 minutes long? Why is why is this VOD an hour and 11 minutes long, guys? Okay, it has PGL on the back. I got really nervous. I got really nervous, guys. I, you made me really nervous that this game was like 50 minutes long and I was going to have to sit through another 35 minutes of this shit. But it's not. There actually is just PGL at the back of this. Okay, it's not It's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's like a 34-minute game or something like that. Why would you do this to me? I mean, to be fair, all I hear most play-by-play -play say is, The meat grinder. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that, that applies to everything. Okay? <laughs> Don't call us out like that. <laughs> Bekos is in the back room crying right now because of you. I hope loud. It's everything he ever needed. <laughs> every play-by-play. -play. It's like when they see an Urgot, I remember 2020, every single one of you. It's just a meat grinder. Mid-tower going to fall in favor of Rogue. Dude, I'm not watching those LCS playoff games on stream. Those are so bad. I already watched a bunch of those games live. Because they're on in the morning for me. Saken has to be careful. He's looking for an opportunity to flank. Doesn't quite have his flash up. Carlson's trying to mark him. Smart move by I guess it's just another easy playoff win for Cloud9, guys. Frozen heart finished on Zoe Elise will help without attack speed slow. Dragon down to 7,000. Targamus stepping forward. Finn doing the same. The hook onto Targamus. The charm to follow. Face call pulls him out. Zoe Elise falls low. Fear beyond death. The meat grinder cometh. As Finn is going to get locked up as well into the pop blossom. He tries to dive back in. Targamus tries to dive onto the back line. Finn goes down, but now it's on Larson and Comp to really open up Bone. Mark Rune's just going to kill everybody, though. Here we go. Nice charm. Goodbye. All right. So, I guess the point of the Urgot is just to assassinate the frontline farming Nautilus, because that's the only thing that he's done so far. He gets a fear, at least, onto Finn. Right? But Finn, they're all clustered up, and Finn still has ult. Where's his ult? All right, he gets his ult off right before he dies, but you only need that one kill to start the Viego snowballing. And there's no real backline threat here on the Senna or the Ari. They do a good job of trying to burst down the Malphite in as much as that is possible. Santa ult gets pretty good value. Bo's ult goes down. So now there's really nothing preventing Marcoon from just running down everybody else because there's such low range. 
Like, you need to kill Marcoon really fast in these fights. If they can kill Marcoon, they probably win. What happened to Saken's ult? It's right here. They they use they only use it on Finn, so there's no real threat. Honestly, Marcoon keeps himself alive through a lot of this by playing the flank. And therefore, he's full HP when it actually comes to the first kill that goes through and he can start the resets. Yeah, he didn't have flash up. Yeah, Sagan just barely didn't have flash up yet. Six grubs now for Rogue. I mean, 85 is not bad. 90 at 21 minutes is not bad. Like, f you know, four souls per minute is pretty good for Senna. So it's definitely like average or slightly above average, I think. Like 80 souls at 20 minutes, pretty good. Pretty good. So 90 souls at 21 minutes is slightly better than pretty good. Is Saken trolling? That's another good one. Yeah. Wow, that was that was a fun fact. I enjoyed all of that, Medic. Thank you. He's that. so he's the first he's the first melee minion, and then as soon as he comes into vision, he just moves. So they know it's him. Instantly. They just know it's him. You can just look up infinite stacking champions or look up Shivana and it's somewhere down the list. Um, I'm not gonna list them all here what? because well, firstly, because I can't remember them all. And secondly, because there's a game of League of Legends happening in front of us. I'm also hoping that a fight's about to break out. It's but why? Primary control of the objective. But look at the top lane. <laughs> there goes my hero. <laughs> Do you care about this drink? I mean, I don't think it's enough. I mean, if you're rogue, not really. Yeah, just, just let him, let him take it. You just know? keep him here. Yeah, let Larson do work in a side lane. Menacing. Send them a threat. I mean, he letter. also has the TP anyway. Does he have a good ward to TP to? Not really. To whom it may concern. Marcoon. Marcoon All right, so they did realize that they Marcoon is the most important person to kill. They did realize that. This is true. This the truth is is that they should be killing Marcoon first if possible. Marcoon is trying to go in by himself. 
I do not know why he's going in by himself. So he can get Giga CC'd with no backup from his team and then killed by Urgot. What the fuck? So, right now, they're split pushing with the Ari, right? Ari doesn't even have Lich Bane. Okay, well, it would be easier, some might say, with the Lich Bane second. Anyway, uh, we have them threatening against the Drake right here. Remember, this is Soul Point. They're split pushing, and Mark Kuhn, his one job is to not walk into the bush with Saken in it. You don't care about the Drake if you're rogue. You're getting in hib for it. Uh huh. So they see Saken's clone come out of that brush. Ergo, they know Saken is in that brush. And then he decides to just 1v1 Saken. Alright. Alright, what is that shot calling from a macro's perspective? Like, why does Marku need to face check that brush? They already got the inhib. The, the call was to give up the Drake. Like, you're just trying to delay long enough for Larson to pick up inhib. You committed to the trade. Both of these teams are very bad. They had the right idea and they executed 99% of it and then they decided to run their most important player into the enemy so he could be killed first for free. Oh my god, the fucking Malfold. Oh lord. Here we go. Do you guys like resets? I love resets. Medic, in this analogy, Humpty Dumpty is Kometo, right? He's Humpty Dumpty? I assume what that means. That's what that means. He has a very uh, Humpty Dumpty physique. <laughs> forgiven? <laughs> Thank you, Forgiven. How you doing, man? And the wall, yes, and the wall is a blue one. <laughs> Thanks for giving. Hope you're doing well, man. Uh, we're, we're wrapping up here, but I, I'll pass the love on to somebody else. How about you? Everything well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chilling in Korea, man. I'll have to catch up with your stream sometime. I'll return the favor if you're streaming. But thanks. Nice of you to give the raid. Yeah, dude. I mean, it looks nice until you realize that Finn has such a great angle. <laughs> Petition just to change Kometo's name to Humpty Dumpty. It's more appropriate. I bet Greek people for sure would love to see you review a game. What what Greek game? <laughs> Comps game? 
team, but ultimately he is the person on your team that you want dying. As Larson, deathless, comp, deathless. I need to get to Greece at some point, man. I've always wanted to go. Haven't been yet. I know so much about ancient Greece, and I've never been. Need to see that shit in person. So we're going to see the flank coming in from Saken. Oh, the root connects under three, and just the timing is fantastic from Finn. And who says that Malphite doesn't have a Get out into the islands, too. So many places I want to go in Greece. <laughs> An eyebrow raise, as there's not much you could have done about that. The arm guard cosplaying the jungle. Going to come across, has that unstoppable force. Cabochon spotted by that super minion. Rogue can just step forward. You've got comp, you've got the range. There's the TB behind. Come on, All right, here he, here he comes. Here comes. Kometo, I mean, Urgot, sorry. My bad. Easy mistake to make, you know. Oh. Well, it was a nice flank attempt. It was the desperation flank. He got one kill. He got the shutdown, guys. I love how Finn has arm guard. Preventing, all right. How many, how many more barons it's gonna take, guys? Surely the game ends here, right? He said, hopefully. <laughs> the flank would have been good if it wasn't Urgot. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of things. This Fed Urgot really is just showing how useful he is. He got the arm guard out of Finn. That was really the value. <laughs> that minion hard right Nico mimic play of the game for sure. I have no idea what was going on there. That was one of the weirder like attempts at a Nico bait bait I've seen. Uh, as a former actor, have you done any Greek plays? I sure have. Uh, I was in the Birds. Quality Aristophanes. Alright, we, we gotta wait for the next Baron. Okay, 30 seconds to the next Baron. We're doing the, the slow... Methodical close here from Rogue. This is the right call to make. How is it both Ultra Fan Orgs and Carmine Corp and Mad Koi have Humpty Dumpty influencer leaders and everybody blindly follows them? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's not, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. To be fair, Ibai kind of looks like Orson Welles. Uh... Like late stage career, Orson Welles when he was like drunk doing uh, wine commercials. If you know what I mean. Alright, Bo goes in. Bo pops ult. Saken comes in. Saken gets a two man ult, but it's onto the tanks. Saken pops arm guard, so he's not charmed. Nice root onto Larson, actually. However, Finn still. Wait, where was Finn? Did Finn just ult in place? Sorry, I didn't see that. Okay, yeah, he did. Basically just ult in place there to provide some peeling, but Markun's coming from the side. Now he's just going to start picking up a million resets, and the game is over.
And it's over. And it's over. Don't even need to get Baron. Okay. Well, that was less bad than I thought it would be, guys, but it was still pretty bad. Ibai is hard to hate? I don't hate Ibai. I'm just saying he looks like Orson Welles, which he does. Here, I'll show you. Orson Welles wine commercial. If you guys haven't seen this, by the way, it is fucking mint. He Orson Welles is so drunk in this commercial, and it's so funny. Here you go. Turn camera. Marked. 102, take one. With overlap, action please. Just do anything? No. <laughs> He's so drunk, he doesn't know when to go. He says, does he do anything? Sorry, cut. Yeah, rolling. 102, take two. Ah, the French champagne <laughs> has always been celebrated for its excellence. There is a California champagne by Paul Masson, inspired by that same French excellence. It's fermented in the bottle, and like the best French champagne, it's vintage dated. So, Paul Masson. <laughs> the way he says it, ah, oh, the French is so good. 102, take three. Action, please. Ah, the French champagne has always been celebrated for its excellence. <laughs> There is a California champagne by Paul Masson. <laughs> ah, the French. Inspired by that same French excellence, it's fermented in the bottle and like the best French champagne, it's vintage dated. So Cut. Paul Masson soup. <laughs> He's so fucking drunk. He's so drunk in this. Um, here's the actual commercial, I think. They eventually got out of it. The taste of French champagne has always been celebrated. For Those sense. are like his super drunk outtakes, though. California champagne by Paul Masson, inspired by that same French excellence. It's fermented in the bottle, and like the best French champagne. You'll, you'll notice that they had to do a voiceover later the on, because I think he was just too wasted on the filming day to actually do this the commercial. California champagne by Paul Masson. Inspired by that same French excellence. Because he's not talking it's there. It's fermented in the bottle, and like the best French champagne, it's vintage dated. Paul Masson's superb taste shouldn't be too surprising. This champagne doesn't come from France, but it was created by a man who did. Paul Masson. Paul Masson will sell no wine before its time. Ah, <laughs> oh, the French. Oh, this has the outtakes, too. With overlap, action, please. <laughs> Does he do anything? <laughs> Action awesome, please. Does he do anything? <laughs> no, sorry, cut. Yeah, roll. <laughs> 102, take two. Ah, the French <laughs> champagne. <laughs> It's always been celebrated for its excellence. There is a California champagne by Paul Masson. <laughs> by that same French excellence. It's fermented in the bottle and like the best French champagne. It's vintage dated. So Paul Masson. 102 take three. Action please. Ah, the French. Oh, the French. <laughs> there is a kind of <laughs> so good. Anyway, he looks like Ibai. And whoever says he looks like a cross between Ibai and Anders is 1,000% accurate. We actually thought at Flashpoint of having Anders do this, like, as a, like, part of a satire sketch. This is too funny. What we really need is a lull emote with fucking Orson Welles. Ah, the <laughs> oh, the French. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks for the host for giving. I, unfortunately, am going to go watch some trash on Brian and Nongshim right now. Uh, but let's see who else is streaming.
Maybe we can pay the host for it a little bit. Lol, nobody's co-streaming this because it's so shit. Are you kidding me? Actually, no co-streamers for Breon Nongshim. Dude. Well. <laughs> can't say I didn't try. <laughs> Gilly should be live in a few minutes. All right, I will wait a few minutes, guys, and then I will give Gillius. I will right, we'll give it to Kelsey's co stream and LPL. We're going to do that. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you back tomorrow for more games. What games are we going to watch tomorrow? We'll probably watch some LCS tomorrow. I hate to say it. We'll probably, by the way, follow the stream. If you haven't already, please do that or subscribe on YouTube. We may watch TL versus Dig tomorrow if you guys want to see my brain fry. Um, are there any good LPL games tonight? Surely there's something, right? Uh, oh, FPX is playing tonight. Oh, they're playing Rare Adam. Oh, Top versus WE. That's probably going to be a good series. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Maybe we will do that tomorrow. All right, guys. See you later.